arena what is what is happening okay we're we're good i don't know what's going on i'm here i'm here refresh refresh <laughs> refresh and we'll be good i don't know that was that was awkward but <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're good. No, I think it was lag on my side. I don't know what happened. Just all of a sudden, everything stopped working. But we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Thank you for the the cheer, by the way. And who, oh my goodness, this name, Han Bronco. Welcome to the fishbowl. First time suck. Big scoops here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, deck number one. Five color domain. Five color domain. We're trying to. I got. I got Frexian. <laughs> the oil. The oil is here. The stream isn't back for you. If you refresh, you should be good. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, start a little bit early so we could get in more games. Uh, hopefully, see more decks. So, this is five color domain. Five color domain. We want lands of each basic land type because as many basic land types as we can get, the more powerful our cards are going to be. It lets us make. <laughs> A ton of beasts with herd migration and reduce the cost on our ley line binding. It lets a Sphinx of Clear Skies as a factor fiction on Reaper. It makes this Shoba Brawler really, really big. So we got a bunch of triumphs. We have ways to tutor up lands like Wither Seed Treaty, ways to play extra lands like Joint Exploration. And that's a plan. It's kind of like five color domain mid-range, essentially. So so that's we're gonna start with that and then we'll we'll go from there. Cause I'm excited to see what domain does. Is three and portal any good? Yes, if you care about domain. If you, if you, uh, if you take and just play in a normal deck, I think it's pretty bad. But if you are uh, trying to turn on domain and up your basic land type counts, then I think it's very good. The problem is it costs life. That's why I don't think it's especially good in. Uh, maybe there's like some five color aggro deck they could play it or something. But the cost of life is painful if you don't care about it being a basic land, uh, having the basic land type. JB the pirate one year resub. Welcome to the fishbowl. Big soup for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May have missed it. But are there lure goyf decks? There, there are lure goyf decks on the list. Uh, Boomer John does a lure goyf deck. Oh, actually, I think there's one I forgot to put on the list too, but that I built, which is <clears throat> all right. Let me let me see. I built I built so many decks. The thirty under twenty <clears throat> articles coming up shortly. So we had the, that. So I've just built like I don't even know a hundred decks in the last two days. But there, oh, saltai goyf. Yeah, I forgot to add saltai goyf. Onto the list. I should add this. Uh, I should add this to the list. This is just full on salty, salty graveyard. Ooh, ooh, getting aggro. I see. Um, well, all right. Try them go. So, what are y'all playing in new standard? Let me add this to the list real quick. So, what are you most hyped for? <clears throat> Finally having ISP problems. I know. I know, I know. Worst time for it, too, on early access day. Hopefully, we're good now. I think, hopefully, it was just a, oh, boy, dress in the main deck. Hopefully, it was just a, a one-time, a one-time thing. Reindeer, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, I don't even think I have a mono green deck, so we should, we should be good on that end. I wonder how good Jaya's Firestorm is. Oh, this is just the, okay, they're just... Straight up the sack deck. Well, um, all right, Courier's Briefcase, go. We got some rep, we got some rep, we'll be good. I don't actually have a full-on Aristocrat deck. I, I build a Weather like complete zombie deck, which I think is interesting, but Ahux Titan, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big Super for you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Fortnite, welcome you as well. Big Super for you, thank you, thank you. Do you follow the lore to see who died? Uh, I know that, I know that Jaya died. I did learn that much. <laughs> I don't follow the lore super closely, but uh, closely enough to know that Jaya is a, uh, is officially dead. Ooh, let me let me see, Doug. Ooh, Vihas with a gifts up from Vencube. Welcome to the visual. Thank you for your subscription. Big super thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're really missing the pieces for a full on for a full on aristocrat style deck. Outside of the artifact deck, we don't have a sack outlet. We're missing the free we're missing a woe strider essentially, or a Yeheni or a whatever. Like something that's just repeatedly Repeatedly gonna let you sacrifice. Man, there's a block. We're gonna, we're gonna be wrathing. Ooh, leyline binding again. Where's our pay? We need a payoff. I guess we can actually. All right, let's think about this. So we are. Uh, let's play Rafine's Tower. Reduce the cost of leyline binding, which is an absurd card. Pass the turn. We can draw three with this briefcase at some point if we don't find something. Loot with the Celestis. 
Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, we'll discard. We'll discard the headquarters. Ewok the Brave. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, only standard today. Can't play other formats. Although there's a lot of stuff from this set I'm hyped to try in like Pioneer, Explorer, Modern, Legacy, maybe even. Also, Wizards announced a finally that they're actually putting a bunch of uh, commander cards on Moto that they hadn't put on there. Do, oh, do we have to kill this token? That feels so bad. How bad is our opponent getting a <laughs> treasure? Oh, I really don't want to do this. <sighs> All right. <laughs> This feels so bad. Lucid handing out the gift sub to Crispy Chicken. Welcome to the fishbowl. <laughs> Crispy Chicken, thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Flickering back and forth between you and Numot because choices are hard. Uh, do you plan on doing Dominator Rough Drafts? Yes. Planning on doing a Dominator Rough Drafts. Although today is going to be all, we're playing all constructed today. We're playing as many new constructed cards as possible, but I will do a, do a Dominator Draft at some point soon. Probably for the YouTube. I don't know. Maybe we do one on stream. Looking forward to getting new toys for Mono Black Discard in Pioneer. Yeah, Liliana's a, a pretty huge upgrade for Mono Black Discard. All right. Payoff. All right, well, we get all of our land types, I guess is good. Pass the turn. Blue, red, white, blue, <laughs> blue, red, green, white, black. All right, yeah, let's just pass. We're gonna draw with Courier's Briefcase. Hey, what's up, Ryan Gay? How are you? Good to see you, good to see you. Opponent gonna flip the saga. Late Line of Singularity, I feel like pretty funny with many of the legendaries in general, since it makes so many takeaways. Ooh, speaking of, speaking of a uh, Ley Line, it's so good with Rockadrobic. I actually, I don't, I, this combo is probably going to be horrible, but I was thinking about this the other day. How do you go infinite with Rockadrobic? The answer is Ley Line of Singularity, then it makes the tokens legendary, and then they can just like loop infinitely with a sack outlet, which is like kind of hilarious. So maybe we got to build that in, in modern at some point. Thank you for all the cheers, by the way. Spice Lord MTG, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh, the Jota deck looks, uh, looks good, by the way, Doug. Joda's Joda's gonna be a very popular commander. Blood Tithe. Doesn't our opponent know about this firestorm coming to ruin their day? Watch him have another dress. <laughs> Main deck dress part two. Wondering if you could help me with a mutate planeswalker deck. Ooh, weather okay. Okay. There's some spice. I like it. Weather like complete. That is a good way to uh rebuild through the to rebuild through the firestorm that's about to happen. I really want to play Ivy Mute. Ooh, Sky Turtle, eh? I really want to play Ivy Mutate at some point. Uh, all right, Loot would sell it. Oh, Cami War. Cami or Uh, well. Well, 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 well. We will discard. Oh, this is going to be... This is going to be good. The Mike Arnold. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When are 30 casual decks going to be published? Uh, Thursday is the plan. Uh, should have it all done for Thursday. So, in time for the actual for release of the set. Maybe we Wrath first? Actually, we could... Uh, we can just take our beats, right? Let's... Yeah... Uh, this is tricky. We could Wrath, but then this is going to flip. We can Cami War away the Weatherlight complete, but then we're taking... Yeah, I think we got a Wrath, unfortunately. Yeah, let's just Firestorm, no kicker. So we have away the creatures. Question any of the Commander Precon spoiled... Uh, question any of the Commander cards spoiled, are they Precon cards? Uh, Wait, I'm so confused. Right now we're playing a uh, five color domain. First deck of the day, five color domain. We we finally found a domain payoff. <laughs> so far we have not hit many of our domain payoffs, but they're coming, I swear, they're in the deck. <laughs> we have payoffs. All right, there we go. Two mana five three trample. Beat that. Beat that weather like complete. Dally all welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have you seen the art of uh, the Braid Saga? It's so sweet. Jari Tiger and Alex Mateo. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at this art. I just I just today saw the full 
the full art of this. Oh, it's so sweet. This is Braid's fight, Frightful Return, but actually the full size art. Look at how wild that Braid's looks. This is like one of my favorite art. It's so sweet looking. Wouldn't that be an awesome like album cover? This would be such a, I could see this totally being an album cover art. Ah, oh, so good. So they really have a lot of awesome art in this set. Uh, ooh, Liliana A. Liliana A. Does this damage Planeswalkers? It does. So if we sweep the board, whether like complete turns on. Let's, actually this makes more sense probably is keep waiting. Let's Leyline Binding, get rid of Weatherly like, Complete, Firestorm, get rid of everything else, pass the turn, hold on to the, one thing you gotta learn if you're going to, uh, if you're going to play in a Liliana format is holding on to extra lands goes way up in value because you want the, the fodder to discard a Liliana, so keep that in mind, keep that in mind if you uh, try this format. Holding on to extra lands gets even more important. Mitcho, welcome to the baseball. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big stupid for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A lot of the sweet commander cards are in the main set, although there are also commander precon cards. Well, all right, it is the time has come. Uh, Camior, <laughs> boy, we are just. This has not felt close. Like I feel like we're just absolutely crushing our opponent. We're not close to killing them, but oh, mana blue tempo. I do think maybe like Delver could be a good budget magic deck, although ugh, they got a curiosity back. Ugh. Mono Blue Tempo is one of my least favorite decks to play against. Like, oh, it's so obnoxious. Ooh. All right. Discard the land. Bounce the token. Hey, what's up, Dables McBooty? It's good to see a Courier's Briefcase. And then draw three. Courier's Briefcase is such an underrated card. <laughs> Good old seven mana draw three, play the land, pass the, this one's so over. It is, so, where's our, an opponent scoops it up. How is our opponent at five? We didn't even, we didn't even actually damage them. Hey, what's up, Rifty? How are you? Good to see you, welcome to the stream. Yeah, I don't know, those lands are, are unique. I hadn't seen them before. Yeah, I was trying to build an Ivy deck because Ivy is such a cool card. The Simic uh, spell copying thing. There's not a lot of pieces in standard for it. I feel like, and also it's important to remember, ooh, herd migration draw. It's important to remember these cards are gonna be in the format for two years. So stuff like Ivy, maybe we don't have the pieces to make it like go off yet, but give it time and uh, and it's likely that's gonna actually change. El Vuga, welcome, ooh, aggro A. <clears throat> El Vuga, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All five land types turn two with a mana up to cast a ley line binding. <laughs> welcome to Dominaria Standard, Philippa PG. Welcome to the fishbowl, thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Yeah, the Triumphs make a deck like this possible. Like that is, that is the secret. Ooh, Phoenix Chick. Okay. Well, now we might just kill that. Bases of Kumana. Yeah, let's just let's just not get get chicked here. Yeah, Leyline Binding's so good. It's so good. Ooh, Joint Exploration, and we can kick it. All right, play the land. Kick this. Super Grow Spiral. Oh, one, two, three. Probably don't need Cami War yet. Put the land into play. Go. Yeah, Phoenix Chick, I think, is actually pretty good. Any surprise all star. So, this is the first deck we've played. So, not yet. Although, I will say, immediate impression is getting domain, if you want, is not, is not that hard. <laughs> we just literally had all the colors, uh, all the land types on tier two. Leon's two, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop for you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Hmm. Now what? We gotta not die. That is a bit of a concern here. This is gonna flip, that is a lot of damage. All right, let's, yeah, discard herd migration. We have all of our land types, so we'll take a forest. 
play headquarters. We're probably just gonna have to have to bounce something. Oh yeah, Leyline Binding's so good in this deck. Yeah, full release on Thursday. This is the early access day, and then Thursday is the the full release. Well, all right, Sky Turtle, <laughs> save save us. I miss beating of the stream. Are you playing a deck for the new Joyra? I do not have a Joyra deck. I have not figured out how to make Joyra actually work in our current. Wow, they've drawn so many of these sagas. We're gonna need us. A... Ooh, okay. That is a good one. That is, this is maybe the best domain payoff. Sphinx of the Clear Skies, five mana, five, five, hit your opponent, factor fiction, and as ward, so our opponent's not gonna kill it. Uh, I have a few Jaya decks, or decks that Jaya are, uh, are in, like uh, various mid range, etc. All right, opponent, Goro Goro. Well, um, yeah. Let's factor fiction real quick. <laughs> Let's do some factor fictioning. Did we find a sweeper? No. All right. Not the best. We were hoping for a sweeper, but that's fine. Oh, we have a new donation from. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you, opponent. <laughs> The old five one split. A new generation learns about factor fiction. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, that was that was a good turn. That was a good turn. From Meme Hammer, five dollar donation. Hey Seth, first time Twitch sub, long time YouTube sub. When you get a chance, can you give me your advice on making this deck playable? Thanks for all you do. Well, Meme Hammer, thank you so much for the donation, and I will pull up the deck. An opponent. I think does that count as a shame scoop? <laughs> <laughs> that might be a shame scoop. Wow, gift subs for days. Coral, Henio gift subs. Jetty, Fred, R Rhino Maru, Spider, Minus, Hylochrome, Real Rankler, MGA, Strange Bad, Pepperjack. Welcome you to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Boost you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you make this deck playable? Mutate Planeswalkers. So the idea is turn. Turn your your planeswalkers into uh, into creatures with the help of Luxor, and then you can mutate on them, which does hilarious things. I don't know if it does any like super super effective things, but it is really funny. How would I make this work? I would say I would try to find a way. Hmm. How can you find Luxor? That's the question. Is there a way to find Luxor? Because that is the essential piece to actually doing what you want to do. Might also want more planeswalkers. I guess like. <sighs> Maybe you, could, maybe you just go on the Auspicious Sterix plan. Maybe you're just trying to mutate and put everything into play with Sterix and then trust that that's going to let you combo. Although maybe if you go off with Sterix, you just win even without the Planeswalker shenanigans. But I like the idea. So that's what I would focus on. Find the Planeswalkers, find Luxor. In Explorer, it's not like there's a Stoneforge Mystic, so I'm not sure the best way to do that in a in a shell like this. I'd have to look into it a little bit. But I think that's going to be the challenge. Like, if the goal is to mutate on Planeswalkers, build it like an against odds deck where you maximize your... <laughs> They're advertising their Instagram. That's new. <laughs> Does anyone follow the M MTGA Insta? <laughs> My... Carter refers to you as the opponent guy. Can you please give some good opponents this stream so I can irk him when I watch it again later on, on replay? I will do my best for you. Uh, I will I will try. I technically have an Insta, but I don't actually... I, <laughs> I don't know if I told you this. Uh, I don't think I did. When I was at, when I was at the, the Richmond Magic event, I was at the hotel, and I was talking... Uh, I was I was talking to this woman at the elevator, and we were chatting. And she's like, "Oh, do you have a Insta?" And I was like, "Well, no, not really, but I I have a I have a Twitter." And she <laughs> she looked at me like I had two heads. Like like how in the world does <laughs> does someone not have an Instagram but uses Twitter? <laughs> it was like it was like she couldn't even comprehend that that would be something someone would do. So I was like, "Huh, maybe maybe I should actually start using Instagram." <laughs> Is that a is that a thing? Do you have to use Instagram these days? <laughs> um, does anyone else remember when we last had a standard with zero band cards? You know what makes this standard super unique? This is the first standard I want to say ever where there are zero vanilla creatures. Zero. 
None. I don't think it's ever happened before. No vanilla creatures, which is kind of kind of wild, actually. Esper A. Um. Uh. I think we want to. I think we want to save this for when we can ramp next turn, probably. Never use Instagram because my mind, it's primary place for photos. Yeah, that's how I think of it too. Like you don't interact on it. You just put photos on there. Uh, but apparently it's it's much more than that. In every So we'll get more sets in standard, but as of right now, all five sets in standard, zero, zero vanilla creatures. Dreadmaw's vanilla, isn't it? Wait, does it have trample? I don't even know. I need to know the meme better. It might have trample. Oh, it does have trample, so it's not vanilla. Uh, all right, opponent. Draw two cards. Okay, so opponent's probably playing some sort of reanimator style deck. Now well, let's um, let's kick a joint expiration. I think joint expiration is a really. I think this is a really good. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, uh, firestorm to the bottom. Do we even want this brawler at this point? We kind of want, yeah, I don't think so. I think we want land types. Or more joint explorations. That's also, <laughs> that's also fine. That also works. So what are we playing, uh, are we playing next, chat? What's next on your list? I mean, so it's one more mana than Grow Spiral. <sighs> oh, they're doing it. <laughs> yes. All right, opponent. Make that Power Stone token. <laughs> you can, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Oh, that's a Karn. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, now we have to kill the card because after me saying it's the worst Planeswalker of all time, we we can't lose to Karn during early access day. That would be that would be an embarrassment. Ooh, the Haunty Jin. I think Haunty Jin's like legit good. All right. Would you like to cast an artifact spell with this power stone? Let's see if this power stone does anything. Maybe. Maybe we will eat our words and it'll be way better than I think. Um, I'll play the land. So we only have one blue. What are we doing here? So next turn we want to play. We don't want our stuff to get countered. I don't know what we do this turn. Why do you feel like Karn's the worst? Oh, let me count the ways that this Planeswalker is bad. <laughs> there are many of them. You know, let's just, is this an instant? Oh my God, that's an instant. Okay, let's just pass. Wow, Joint Exploration is so good. I didn't even, <laughs> I was thinking this was a sorcery and it was really good, but it's an instant. It's an instant. So why is Karn bad? It costs four mana. It does, ooh, she older it, okay. It costs four mana. It does nothing meaningful. Uh, if you play it on turn four like our opponent does, your only option is to make a power stone. It doesn't really do anything. If you do one tap with it and you try to negative, you got to spend mana like it's in a lens lamp, which is so bad. And then the ultimate's okay, but it's not something that wins you the game immediately. So there is really not many redeeming qualities, in my opinion, uh, for Karn the Great Creator. I don't even think it can see play in the future, honestly. Like, even if we get a bunch more artifacts in the next, uh, next set, I still think it's probably, probably pretty bad. Well, let's bounce the Hawny Jin. Get it out of here. We got a, another new donation from, <clears throat> and then let's get rid of that shield red. Don't really want any pieces of that. <laughs> this the shard has done literally nothing. I don't even mean like figuratively nothing. It's just done literally nothing. <laughs> like this is not not a card. It is literally not a card. New donation from WenQ, $5 donation. How can I make Raph in the new one white counter spell make a token deck? I love tokens and love tempo, must have it. I haven't really built a Raph deck, but I do think that token counter spell can be pretty good. My right, opponent's trying to go off with shield red. Gain some life. Swing for zero. I think new shoulder is good. I do. I think it's a good card. I think people are underrating it. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. Oh, if we could get rid of this. Hmm. So we get drained. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really want a factor fiction. How do we get to factor fiction? All right. Let's uh. Let's start by. 
Kicking another joint exploration. <sighs> Neither of these actually help. I mean, I guess Jetmir's Garden is a land type. Green, white, blue. Does that even matter? Yeah, bottom, bottom. We need removal. We need to get rid of this honey. Oh. Well, I mean, that's potential removal for next turn. She altered is kind of wrecking us here. Play the briefcase. We're going to go attacking. If our opponent kills it, then they kill it, I guess. We might be dying here. We might actually... Might be the first loss of the day. Gravas! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. It makes you feel Thank you, thank you, thank you. She altered his tendrils of agony. I mean, it's... It's slow, but we can see here, we haven't been able to kill it. It sat out for three turns. Our opponents gained a ridiculous amount of life. We have lost a ridiculous amount of life. Just for opponent doing nothing. They're not even like doing anything specific around it. They're just, they're just playing Shieldred. Oh, oh, we don't have black. That's awkward. I want to play this Cami War, but if it gets negated, we're in such bad shape. Oh, how much do I get recognized in public? Um, at magic events, very, very recognized. I think they got a counter. I also think this Power Stone chart has done literally nothing. Well, I mean, we got to go for it. <clears throat> Please don't counter it. If they counter this, we probably lose. <gasps> All right, no counter. Cammy, Shieldred gone. Smack you with the Brawler. Pass the turn. About it on depth. Wow, so many subs. Dark Avada, Puntologist. And we got another donation too. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. Such a such a busy day so, uh, so far. Hon, Hon Brown Co. Now Brown Cow. $10 donation. Uh, do we even want to bounce it? <laughs> do we even want to bounce it? <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Now, now, broke out ten dollar donation. Oh, I actually so one card you will not find in our decks. Actually, we got this donation. Big fan of your content. Normally, you don't get to see your live streams because of my work schedule, but I'm glad I'm able to, uh, to be here for early access day. Good luck and have fun. Well, thank you so much, how now, brown cow. I appreciate it. One card you will not find in any of our decks today is cut down. Not that there is not a role for cut down in standard, but every time I I go to put cut down in a deck, I end up I end up cutting it. I don't think it's actually I don't think it's actually all that effective uh, in our current standard format. I think my decks are going more like wait, what are we getting? I mean, I think there's a role if the meta is right, like a sideboard card against aggro, but it just doesn't, it doesn't do enough. It doesn't, it doesn't kill enough things. It's not, it doesn't get rid of enough three drops, basically. <clears throat> Boy, so many lands. Well, at least we get a cami war. Well, smack you with the Neshoba. <laughs> so this is the opposite of last game. Last game we had... <laughs> Turn to full domain. This game, it's like turn 10 and we still may have three land types. I feel like I'm... Wait, what am I getting punted for? Am I going to the summit in November? I don't think so. Wait, what is this card? Oh, okay. That's actually kind of good if you got a lot of instants and sorcerers in a graveyard, I guess. Well, I mean, we got nothing going on. We really need to draw... <clears throat> A real card that does magic the gathering things. Bad magic to the gathering. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent casted all the removals. So opponent's like a, a control deck, I guess. The mere control. Can we draw a non-land magic? <laughs> sort of. Actually, that's not the worst. Uh, okay. So what do we do with the turtle? What do we do with the turtle? Oh, are you going, Doug? Uh, oh, I wanted to go. The problem with it was it was just uh, very close to Vegas. So that was kind of the... Can we do this in a way that lets us cast... Oh, we don't have black mana. All right, one, two, three... 
Well, I guess our plan is Sky Turtle for Sphinx. Sphinx! Hopefully start drawing some cards if they can't kill it. Oh, I missed a kill? A uh, cheer? Oh, my apologies, Vios. Pull it, please. <laughs> Photos just got so many random random Magic the Gathering cards. <laughs> if it's a card that you could imagine Krim playing, <laughs> opponent's playing a single copy of it in their deck. <laughs> you said Arclight Phoenix wasn't very good. It is all played every format back to Legacy. Haha, -ha. also caused four mana. Cheers. That is true. I think the I think the lesson I think the lesson of Arclight is if there's a card that can come back from the graveyard for free, it's probably going to be good no matter how bad it is. <laughs> I think that's the the takeaway. When I, my thinking is when it comes to spoiler stuff, like... Alright, so opponent has every answer. Kills another Sphinx. Obnoxious. Untaps. Goes to combat, hits us with a Phyrexian Rager. All right, so I'll play the Brawler. Pass the turn. Still only, still only three land types, which is kind of uh, brutal. Tribute to Urborg's a card that. Huh? I guess our opponent wants it in the graveyard. Are we triggering revolt? <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Okay. I'll smack ya. Are we gonna? Is there a chance that we still win after all this? <laughs> <laughs> Pony has just countered and killed all of our sweet cards. We have not hit our land types, and I feel like we're still in this game, especially with his Leyline Binding in hand. I own it. Thank it. Basic. Thran Portal. Not Well, that's a land type. That's a land type. Play this on black. Get the land type. Smack you for four. The Brawler, I think, is actually pretty good. So... Uh, Nishoba Brawler, power is equal to the number of, uh, land types we have. So I think this card is, this might actually be, like, Domain Goif <laughs> for standard. If you're playing a Domain deck, this is actually, like, very good. We did cycle the, the garden. Black man is the main thing we're missing. Now if we draw, like, a Courier's Briefcase, we can actually crack it to draw cards. Wait, so what What deck are we playing next? Speaking of Arclight... Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying about Arclight. My, uh, during spoiler season... <laughs> do it. Do it, opponent. Do it. Yes. Yes, do that, opponent. Pay all of your mana to draw a single card. <laughs> card! <laughs> Card is so bad. But during spoiler season, you're gonna miss on things. So uh you wanna learn when you miss. That's that's my main that's my main goal. When I when I miss during spoiler season, my goal is to at least learn something. Alright, Leyland binding. Get rid of the card. <laughs> they might draw another card. <laughs> well, alright. Get the last land type. Hit you for five. Opponents down to six. Pat, we have run so clunky, but we're still, we're making it. We're making it. Isn't Karn great in combo decks? I don't think it's even good in combo decks. I don't think it's good in, like, I don't think it's good anywhere. Like, even in a combo deck, you got to pay that amount of mana. Like, the man. oh, my God. Um, Okay. That changes. That changes things. Uh, the one of Shigiki is uh, is going to be pretty decent here. <laughs> Honeygen, sure. Uh, one, two, three, four. So we can get five things back from our graveyard. <laughs> uh, yes, we will channel Shigiki. Uh, we will get back five things: Sphinx, Sky Turtle, Courier's Briefcase. Uh, Sky Turtle, and, you know, we'll just take, let's take a land. Why not? Boom. <laughs> Shigeki's so good. All right, opponent. Yes. Uh, so, Leyline Binding? How do we feel about that, opponent? How do we feel about that? 
All right, opponent found another counter. Well, we will play Sphinx. We will play Courier's Briefcase. We'll play the land and pass the turn. And this one, it's over. It's over. Shigiki comes through. I love how Seth saw Domineer. I thought, oh, I can play Kami War and Troll Control at the same time. I know. Isn't it the best? <laughs> Uh, let's let's uh bounce the bounce the honey gin. Pick it up, ping it up. Uh, sure. Gonna draw some cards. I mean, so we can turtle back Shigiki and do it again. It's it's never it's never ending. At this point, we just no control deck unless they have graveyard hate is going to beat this. It's just not it's not gonna happen. Honey gin, sure, sure, sure. And Karn. Let's let's finish it with a Karn opponent. Let's finish it with a Karn. <laughs> the, our opponent's problem is they played they played Karn. All right, so opponent's gonna live another turn. Unfortunately, they've run a uh, Rona's Vortex. I will say is like pretty good. Well, all right. Uh, well, our opponent's going to learn about the Turtle Lock. A uh, Turtle for Shigiki. Leyline Binding. Leyline Binding is also... Boy, maybe this is just a good deck. Leyline Binding. Hit you for one. Play Jatmir's Garden. Pass the turn. Luke, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, I guess they thought that it would be good, but... God, that's that's not this card. That's old cards would be very good in a deck like this. Well, Shigiki, X5... And I think this is where it ends. Turtle, Turtle, Sphinx, Cami War, Leyline Binding, just in case. Get them all back. Untap. Cami War. Get rid of the Jin. Sphinx. Hit you for one. And opponent needs a burn spell. If they have a, a lightning strike, they got us. Hey, Seth, do you think there could be some kind of go white Abzan deck utilizing a bunch of a bunch of uh Dominaria legends? Darian, Namada, Rakadrabic, Ellis Core. That seems Ooh, opponent. Huh? Why are they playing Sphinx in a Why are they playing Sphinx in their deck without the land tie? Oh, I guess they're splashing for it. Alright, well, your Sphinx will die. And our Sphinx will, uh, oh, yeah, we, <laughs> we get to get that too for the rub -ins. <laughs> Well, uh, all right. I, I think we have decided that Domain's pretty good. 3-0, and oh, haven't even come close to losing. Hey, what's up, uh, Germinator? I think, I think that means we switch decks. Like, we have so many decks to get through. So what do we learn about Domain? So our lesson so far... Domain, easy to assemble. The payoffs are good. Plus, you get to play Camuor, and Camuor is, is just a cool card. You draw a lot of cards, you kill a lot of things. Also, we learned that uh, <clears throat> Karn is, uh, is as bad as, as we thought. So what's what's next, Jet? What's next? There's a huge list of decks. What do you, uh, you want to see next? The real question is... Uh, is that domain deck more expensive in arena than it is in paper? I think it's pretty expensive both uh, both places. <laughs> Boomer Boomer John, people want to see see some Liliana action. Everyone's hyped. All right, Boomer Boomer John. So this is a viewer submitted deck. This is from uh, from our our uh, super editor Niantic. Um I think the idea is to try to make modern Jund essentially work in standard. So you got some Tarmogoyfs, you got Lilianas, you got Fable the Mirror Breakers, you got Zeotor's Envoy. Uh, curious to see how cut down is. I, like I said, I'm skeptical, but I haven't got to play with it yet. So let's try some uh, some Boomery Jund and see and see what happens. Liliana deck number one. Cut cut down. Well, let's try cut down and see. Let's try let's try it and see how it feels. Because like I said, I as I was deck building, I was skeptical of it, but I haven't actually played with it yet. <laughs> is Urborg, Lurgoyf, Tarmogoyf at home? So we might have to try the the very creature-heavy uh, Goyf deck that I made and added to the list late. I feel like, so Urborg, Lurgoyf, I think it's really good, but I think it's not that good in, 
in a mid-range deck like this with a bunch of non-creatures, I think you want to be almost exclusively... Oh, God. Ali is going to be doing something big. I think you want to be almost exclusively... Almost exclusively creatures if you're going to play Herborg Lurg Wife. I think you want to be like a, a Collected Company style deck where you have... This is not my win race, John. This is a this is a viewer submitted boomer John deck trying to trying to make a essentially a modern John deck. Well, okay, the cutdown's gonna be okay here. We get to kill the token. We get to untap. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I guess we just Liliana and start up digging. Liliana number one, take it up. Discard tenacious underdog. This synergy. I made a Saltai Lurg Wife deck, almost all creatures. Yeah, that's what... Where's my... Where's my Goyf deck? Saltai... Saltai Goyf. Yeah, here's... Here was my build. This was trying to, like, maximize the power of the Termagoyf in specific. So, like, the removal's pretty much all creatures. There are a couple of Planeswalkers. So maybe we'll try this one, too, because I feel like this Jun deck, I think, is a sweet mid-range deck. But I'm not sure how good it is at... I'm not sure how good it is at maximizing the power of... Hmm... What do we do now? And maximizing the power of Goyf in specific. This drawing three is going to be an issue. That is going to be an issue. Um. Oh, Liliana. Yeah, we'll have to try the wind. Uh, the wind grace one too. How's Goyf feeling? We haven't drawn it. We haven't actually drawn it yet. Yeah, there's no Bob. I guess the closest to a Bob, I guess, is Fable the Mirror Breaker, but that's not especially close. Tenacious Underdog from the Graveyard. Hmm. I'll play the land. I guess we fable the mirror breaker. Take up Liliana. Discard a lightning strike. Yeah, there's there's not really a good Bob, which I think is a, a problem for this deck. Do you think O'Gary Rock would work in Sting? Ooh, Spirit Sisters call. Good thing we got this Besage you. Although perhaps it's... Oh, they, they discarded Dine of Industry. All right, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a pretty good turn. I mean, this Liliana actually gets us out of this, doesn't it? Kind of. The shield counter is annoying. Hmm. But then there's still a Spirit Sisters call. Ugh. So this gets exiled. Maybe we, can, maybe we can get out from this. Dumbledore Gooch. Welcome to the fishbowl. Hey, what's up, Dogman? Thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the shield counter is pretty good. And we didn't get to loot. Well, all right, Liliana, tick that. How many cards does our opponent have? Two. Well, Liliana, tick down. Get rid of something. I assume the Titan of Industry. Yeah, I wanted to lightning strike it. I wanted to lightning strike ticked out blow up the spirit sisters call oh oh okay well in that case um yeah let's just get rid of that then that's fine this reflections by itself isn't really doing anything <laughs> you got a basic you got a basic <laughs> you got a, i mean there's gotta be a trio right Liliana looks great this match, and people said she won't see play. I mean, Liliana's been good. I think Liliana will see play. Don't read this message. You'll get mana screwed or mana flooded. No in between. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. Well, get in with the goblin. Hedge up, opponent blocks. 
All right, things are things are looking up. Things are looking up. Past the turn. About an adept warbane. Welcome to the Verge Ball. Thank you so. This feels very Jundy. It feels like a Jundak. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big stream for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, we want to keep our Liliana. Kill that. Ooh, timeless Lotus. All right, that's a that's a big one. Um. Wait, does this do anything? Sacrifice, exile target player's graveyard. Well, take up Liliana, discard a card. You won't be outsmarting me. Bun, John, but we play bad cards. That's that's kind of that's kind of it. <laughs> hey, what's up, Magikarp? How are you? How how are things? I noticed you. Although you did say mono blue is fun to play again, so I guess I, maybe that just proved your point that I noticed that message. <laughs> All right, smack ya, blitz ya, draws a Torah's envoy. What are we doing with this infinite? Oh, nothing? Okay, well, take up Liliata. Oh, is this until our next turn? Until your next end step. Hmm. I would like to get our opponent empty-handed. That would be, that would be the best. I'll take up Liliana. Discard a Liliana. Blitz Tenacious Underdog hit ya. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do that. Maybe Tenacious Underdog is our Dark Confidant. We're spending life. We're drawing a card every turn, and we're damaging our opponent. I can see that. It's it's essentially it's essentially Bob for four mana a turn. Well, Liliana, take it up. Discard Tenacious Underdog. Ooh, we're going to pass. We're going to pass. We're going to ultimate a Liliana. Our very first game. We're going to ultimate a Liliana. Tenacious Under Bob, indeed. <laughs> About... Okay, Titan of Industry. Yeah, but that, that doesn't... That doesn't kill Liliana. Um... Let's let's get rid of that. We lose our treasure. Opponent gets a rhino. Oh, <gasps> ultimate, ultimate. <laughs> uh, all right. Huh? Okay, that goes in pile two. That goes in pile two. All right, keep your lands or keep your lotus and your rhino. <laughs> I guess like that's not the that's actually pretty clunky AI, <laughs> but if, hopefully that's how it works. What are we keeping? What are we keeping? <laughs> yeah, that that is not. I was hoping it would pop up and you actually separate it, but this is like a weird numbering system, essentially. Well, all right, Liliana, take it up. Discard. And we'll discard the charm. They should have done the heiress thing where you move the card into piles. Yeah, that's would have been intuitive. All right, well, I guess we go back to under bobbing. <laughs> Well, maybe this deck's actually kind of good. I mean, I guess we're also playing against the the weird Elian Trazi big mana pile, so. On Moto, it pops up in a separate window with all the cards, and then you you choose what you want to do with them, essentially. I mean, I think this Tenacious Underdog is... <laughs> Have we dealt damage with anything else? All we have done is underdog this entire game. <laughs> I think Damata's sweet. I think Damata's pretty good. All right. Ooh, worlds. Oh, God. World spell. <clears throat> okay. Although it's not very good here because Liliana gets it, right? Like, our opponent reveals stuff, and then we just make him discard it. I guess next turn it might be better. Yeah, Liliana, since it's symmetrical, it's a unique Planeswalker in that you don't actually want to activate it all the time. Like, our opponent's got no cards in hand. We have cards in hand. So, uptaking is actually a negative in that scenario because we're just 
I, we're just discarding a card. So I guess the upside is we're working towards ultimate, but Liliana is one of those planeswalkers that sometimes you really just don't wanna, you really just don't wanna activate it. I'll play the land. This time we will tick up. Discard a land. Tenacious underdog. Here it comes. Blitz ya. Hit ya. Down to five. Blood Tithe Harvester. Pass the turn. Blood Token. Draw a card. Ooh, there's there's a goif. It's a three. It's turned. We went through half of our deck and it's a three four. <laughs> I don't, I don't know about, <laughs> I don't know about this Goyf in this deck. <laughs> yeah, this Goyf is very much at home. I mean, I guess a two mana three, four is still something and we could kick it. It's so funny, Underdog is killing at almost the same pace as killing the opponent. <laughs> it is true. We're taking, we're taking two and dealing three. <laughs> opponent. Wow. This is world spell did not look impressive two seven mana get two lands that is that is about as bad as it gets and that's this should be game right gain a life but you're still just dead tenacious d tenacious d coming through gg and we jumped him out <laughs> yes okay Meliana was actually really good i don't know about i don't know about goyf Goyf did not look impressive there. I missed your thoughts on this deck at the start of the stream because of the crash. Ooh, let me let me take a peek. I mean that that went well. That went well for the boomer jund. Esper Spirits or Abzan Spirit Sisters, eh? Ooh. I mean Spirit Sisters call is definitely a definitely a super cool card. This is a, this seems like a good way to make it work. I like the, the doom foretold saga plan. I got some ramp to get into it. I like it. I mean, it reminds me of some of the doom foretold decks and I feel like spirit sisters call seems like a, in a natural addition to a deck like that. So that looks really sweet. That's a, that's a neat idea. All right, let's, let's turn them out one more time. Why is it going salt? I not jund. Yeah, it is a little weird, isn't it? We can't even, we can't even double kick it. Ooh, opponent's also trying to jund us. Well, so what do we think about cut down then? Cut down, it killed something one time. <laughs> and then we discarded it to Liliana several times. I mean, I guess it can kill Tenacious Underdog. So I'll tell you, the yeah, I mean the graveyard matters part makes sense. So what is it that makes the deck boomer? Um, oh, I really don't want to lose another tenacious underdog. Let's just, uh, let's just blood tie. That's fine. So boomer jund is actually a modern distinction in modern there because of modern horizons two, they're developed two versions of jund. One of them plays a bunch of modern horizons two cards and people started calling it zoomer jund. And then the more old school builds that don't play as many modern horizons two cards were the, were the boomer jump decks. Uh, I think in this deck it's, it's mostly just, uh, just a name. I mean, it is modeled after the the old the old Jund decks in modern, so it makes sense. But I don't know what in specific would make standard Jun boomery. Now let's play the Envoy. Run it out. Yeah, they're gonna rebalance Karn hard in Alchemy. <laughs> I don't know about one mana. It would it would probably be busted at one. It would definitely be busted at one mana. One mana card would actually be absurd because then the ramp would actually be really good in an artifact deck. If it was just like play Karn, one mana, make a... Do they whiff? Oh! oh! <laughs> Take Numa whiff. All right. All right, all right. Have we lost today? I don't think we've lost today. That's true. We don't have... Ooh, opponent's playing a Windgrace Jun deck and this cut down's looking worse. Okay, opponent does some, does some ramping. Hmm. Wait, can we shrink and then kill? Maybe that's the combo. Blood Tithe Harvester plus Cutdown gets rid of it, right? <laughs> Jesus. 
<laughs> Jesus Zilla, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big stupid here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this makes it a three-two. Yes, yeah, this, this should work. So shrink it, turn cut down into a less bad card. Kill it. <laughs> combo. That's what we call a combo. Eh, I guess we hit you with Zatora first. Hit ya. Do we get a free spell with Zatora's Envoy? Eh, yeah, we do. Pill for you. That's a, that's, ooh. <laughs> cut, cut down is, cut down is not impressive unless you got the Blood Tithe Harvester. Opponent's hand is so bad. <laughs> Oh, that is that is not ideal. Ooh, tutor mode. I like that. I mean, Pilfer seems good. Two mana, two mana discard in standard is fine. We pilfered their, <laughs> we pilfered their meatballs. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a good standard, isn't it? <laughs> oh, where else do you get to pilfer someone's meatballs? Do we win here? Oh, they can kill the... The tenacious underdog. Well, let's let's blitz it. Why not? Blitz an underdog. Get in. Oh man, if the overlays worked on YouTube or on Magic Online, it would be so sweet. I mean, they're still super sweet, even though they don't work those places. But well, smack ya. Now to four. You may not play this card. All right. Thank you for letting us know. Uh, well, okay. Sexnacious underdog. So if our opponent tutored up Meatball to, to get to get back the one we pilfered, I think we just win, right? So if you're looking at the deck list sheet, this is, this is a Boomer Jund. A Bodent. I mean, they had to tutor up something, a sweeper, right? What else would they possibly tutor? What are your thoughts on Dominary as a whole? Okay, so they did tutor up meatballs to make up for the, the pilfered meatballs. But then they just die to Zatora's Envoy number two here. Uh, yeah, blitz them. Here they come. <laughs> Smack. And opponent, pretty dead. Uh, I love uh, I love this set. I absolutely love this set. Hey, what's up, uh, Gog? How are you? Welcome, good to have you. Do you prefer DMU or the OG Dominaria? Oh. So OG Dominaria was really sweet for its time. We'll do one more with Boomer John and then we'll switch. Um, I could I could see it being the standard Blood Braid. I can see the comparison there. Ooh, Liliana. Oh, Goyf. Okay, Goyf. This is your chance to prove to us that you're actually good. Actually, maybe we try the Creature Goyf deck after and see what, what Goyf can actually do. Um... I think I prefer you wanna see some elves? We can we can do some elvesing. The elf deck, I don't know if it's good, but I do wanna try it and see if it's good. <laughs> I don't I don't have a Karn deck. I don't think so here's the problem with Karn. Here's the issue with Karn. Apart from it being bad, like obviously obviously is I, I don't think it's a good card. The problem is it's also not an interesting card. And that's that's where it becomes unforgivable. I am perfectly fine with building around bad cards. The problem with ooh double, f ooh defiler first defiler sighting red defiler eh. So double fable defiler thundering around you. <sighs> All right, we'll take a Fable, pass the turn. This might be tough. This might be tough. Opponent, Fable the Mirror Breaker. This might get tough. Gets and hits us. Ooh, play the land. Can we jund away the board? That's the question. Hopefully they play Thundering Raju here and, and we can kill it with Lightning Strike. That'd be big. They go with Defiler, which we... Okay, so this, this also sort of works. So cut down this. Lightning strike this. I mean, we're still getting smacked by this thundering Raju. 
and a pink. Oh, wow, that's actually insane. Now Liliana does nothing. Oh, that's... That is probably the sound of us dying. <laughs> to Voldaren Epicure of all things. Yeah, that coming down for free is like absurd for our opponent here because it makes Liliana so bad. Oh, and they get to flip. We need, we need a miracle. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. Oh, double defiler. Oh, jeez. Well, the top of our opponent's deck has, has been very kind to them. All right, Goyf. All right, Goyf. Come on, Goyf. Come on. We can kick it once. We should probably play Zatora's Envoy, but it doesn't really matter. We're dead no matter what. Boom. All right, Goyf. All right, three mana. Play it. Mill a creature. That's a one, two, and we're dead. Uh, so, Goyf. Very bad. Let's try the actual Goyf deck real quick, and then we'll... So, the Jun deck, I think that Jun midrange... I think that Jun midrange has potential to be to be good in standard. Uh, even the even the bad cutdown, or questionable cutdown, was actually pretty effective. However... I think that Goyf should not be in this deck. Uh, Goyf needs many, many creatures to be effective. For Goyf to be effective, you need a ton of creatures. This deck just does not have many creatures. There's a total of, what, 14 creatures. Uh, so that means Goyf is not going to be very big, like, at all. So let's see what happens if you actually build a, a Goyf deck. So I think that that deck... Uh, I think that Jun is a sweet deck, but what happens if you actually just try to maximize Tarmogoyf's potential or a standard Tarmogoyf? How how good is Goyf in a Goyf deck? So the idea of this deck is to play almost all creatures. We have 32 creatures, and we have not only Goyf, but old stick fingers to take advantage of it. And then we got a bunch of graveyard synergies, and because we're in a channel standard, we still get counter spells and mirror shell crab we still get bounce spells and colossal sky turtle uh we can try out writhing necromass which seems good if you can self mill enough or time more removal on a body so let's see what happens if you go all in on all in on goif what would i replace all right let's let me see where's my my jun wind graze deck what do we have in the two drop slot blood tithe tenacious underdog so i would say <sighs> What's next after those two? Then it, it does become it does become a little bit more a little bit more questionable after that. Um I don't know if you have Tenacious Underdog and you have Blood Tithe Harvester, maybe you don't even need a third one. I like a Valve Sleeper. That's in my my black aggro deck. Oh, we have so many decks to get through. Oh, this hand is so yeah, we got a mulligan this. <laughs> we got the wrong colors. We got two writhing necromances. Oh, that's okay. Okay. It's Goyf's time to shine. We even got the death bonnet sprout. All right. All right. Here we go. These are going to be some Goyfs. These are going to be some Goyfs. Do you think there's any chance something from Mono Green or Rakdos gets banned in Pioneer? So I was actually thinking about this recently. Rakdos is very, very good, but what could you possibly ban out of Rakdos? The problem, the problem is it's a very hard, wow, no three lands. The problem is it's a very difficult deck to actually, to actually hate on with banning. Let's just, yeah, let's kick a, actually, do we wait? Maybe we counter and try to double kick? Yeah, let's leave up Crab here for Liliana. Let's leave up Crab for Liliana and then, Maybe we draw a land and can double kick. A uh, bonus. Fable the Mirror Breaker. I actually had a conversation with Krim about this because Krim was, ooh, fight rigging. That's also, that's worth, uh, that's worth crabbing. <laughs> yeah, none, none of that. None of that. Yeah, Undead Butler might be worth it. Mill a creature, draw a land, flip it, double kick. Wait, where's the, huh? Is there a bug? Where's the, I'm afraid to click. I want to kick it twice though. I don't want to, I'm afraid if I click this, it's just going to go. There's not, I'm not missing anything, right? Shh. 
Why, Arena? Why? All right, two mana, five, six. We milled pretty pitifully, but we got one. We hit one creature. <laughs> why would anyone know that? How would anyone who just picked up Arena for the first time? Why would you think? Because it. Why would you think it works that way? Why would you think? Oh, it's gonna pop up again and give me another set of options. <laughs> <sighs> Arena's design decisions are so are so mind blowing a lot of the time. More fight riggings. Well, we got a goyve. We got we potentially two goyves. Uh, because yeah, I guess it's because of mobile. But couldn't you? So, question. I don't know enough about. I don't know enough about programming. Ooh, all right. Well, let's do this again. Death Bannet Sprout. Choose one. Okay, so I click one. Choose one. <laughs> Couldn't you have it work differently on mobile than in... Wow, that's a that's an eight, nine. See, Goyf is going off now. Goyf is like seriously going off. That's like impressive. Turn five, two, eight, nines. That's better than that's better than a real goyf. So no, my question is, though, like, couldn't you have it work in a one way on mobile and another way on PC where most people play? Like, do you have to have unintuitive design on PC just so it can work on mobile? Or couldn't you? I I don't know if no I don't know enough about programming. I would hope that you could do it that way. Yeah, these are these are good goyfs. Flip it. Exile your Titan industry. Well, and let's just let's finish him. Finish him. Uh, take down. <laughs> Out of here. Whoo! Those were, those were, uh, those were good goifs. That was impressive. Maybe the Saltai deck's good. Maybe the Saltai deck's actually good. That felt, that felt absurd. <laughs> yeah, that that Goyf was very impressive in a deck with uh with all the creatures. Yeah, cut it cut it from the Jun deck list unless you're gonna find a way to play more creatures. But I don't think you want to play more creatures in Jun because the reason to play Jun, yeah, that was on a Mulligan, wasn't it? The reason to play Jun is you get Liliana, you get Ren, you get Fable the Mirror Breaker, you get the good removal. So I just don't think that this Goyf works in the the mid rangey Jun decks in standard. Have you got any deck lists for what's on stream? Oh, do we? There's a there's a whole doc uh, in the deck command. Every deck list that we uh, will play or might play is is on there. Ugh, no green mana. We're gonna we're gonna keep it. We got the goyf. That's all that <laughs> that's all that really matters. So this is salt eye goyf. If you're trying to find it on the sheet, Ooh, goyf travel could be fun in like modern. Ultra Week, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank ya. Um, John Day. Well, uh, all right. Let's let's just play this. Pass the turn. Still need that green mana. Do I have any plan for a Zur Spirits deck? So Zur is one of the archetypes that I haven't built yet. I've been building so many decks the last couple days, but I just haven't uh, haven't got to Zur yet. Although I'm really hyped for Zur, I think that Zur is a is a super a super cool build around. Angsty Panda, well, oh, there's Green Mana. Angsty Panda, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop to you for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, kick it and kick it. All right, that's a that's a two mana six seven. Um, take it up. Discard. Ottawa. I mean, Goyf seems legit in this deck. That's a 6 7. Not getting that with Cutaway or whatever it was. About it. Fat Butters. Oh my god, another one. Fat Butters, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take up Liliana. Discard Sky Turtle. Grow the Goyf. Yeah, that Meatball Massacre not going to do it. Uh, kick it. Kick it. Mill it. Wow! Every single one was a land. 
<laughs> we milled six lands off that double kicker. We haven't got to nine mid range yet. It's it's still on the list. So far we've played opponent's dead. Opponent's super dead. Well, I guess Titan of Industry kind of gives our opponent a shot, but not even really. Goyf's insane. Goyf's like okay. So I think this Goyf's actually very good. I wonder if this Goyf can work in older formats. Like, there's been some dredgeless dredge decks in Pioneer. I wonder if this could... I Maybe it has a shot in those decks. Yeah, Rith is in the... Oh, another one. Well, all right. Um, This is actually going to be kind of funny. Uh, opponent, creatures or lands? Your choice. <laughs> If they get rid of the creatures, then we just old stick fingers or... Oh! <laughs> oh, they got rid of all the lands. Oh, my God. I was not expecting them to actually do that. All right, Goyf. Attack, attack. <laughs> Bone it went for it. I can, I can respect that. <laughs> I don't think it's going to lead to a victory, but... <laughs> Opponent confidently, confidently sacked all their lands. I think they, I think they, oh, I think they uh, did that intentionally. I don't, I don't know if that was a punt or if they thought that was their best chance of winning. Or else we haven't been on the receiving end. We've ultimated two Lilianas. We have not been on the receiving end of a Lilian ultimate yet. All right, one more, one more with the Saltine. We'll keep moving, moving on. Wow, this deck's yeah, Goyf. If you play all creatures in your deck and are a self mill deck, Goyf is really, really good. If you're just a mid range deck with some planeswalkers and a bunch of removal and all that kind of stuff, then it's then it's much less exciting. Oh, we got a we got an Elves fan. Elves and zombies. Okay, maybe maybe we'll try the tribal decks next. Perma Daddy, first time sub. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Johnny's in the the super friends deck that we haven't played yet. Yes, graveyard hate gets us pretty pretty good. Pretty pretty good. Yeah, we enjoy it. Oh, triple goyf. Okay. Uh, well, so far we've seen. We have seen Goyf be amazing, so we're going to trust that uh, Goyf Tron is best Tron in standard. <laughs> yeah, early access just standard in draft. What is the what is the answer for the UI, Magikarp? Shrugs, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subs... <laughs> Shrugs to funk? Big soup, Jeffrey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, ooh, some band action. Okay, we're not, we're not going to play Goyf without kicking it with zero creatures in the graveyard. UI Okay. It's a three two, sure. Now playing the land. Goyf kick it. That's such a weird UI. Mill A creat A creature. That was a that was a sad goyf. That was a sad goyf. All right, another one. We would like to draw land here. Opponent smacks us. Oh, not a land. Well, okay. Kick a goyf. Please hit some creatures and not all of. Oh. Oh, we are. Uh, we are low rolling. We are low rolling so much. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess that's the downside of this plan is if you mill your lands and if you mill your lands and draw your creatures, this goes a little bit worse. All right, let's try this again. Oh, Goyftron is failing us at the moment. Well, we hit two creatures at least. That's a little tiny bit of something. Yeah, we might have to regrow a land at some point. When Rada becomes tapped, another target creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of basic land types. All right, so they can one, two, three, four, four. But their Rada will 
likely die. Oh, opponent's playing elves. Interesting. Well, block, block, block. Take roughly infinite. Down to five. Uh, this is so such horrible running. I it seems like a twenty five six land deck. Eh, I mean, I don't know if I would agree with that. I think we just uh like I mean look at our mills. <laughs> we milled many lands and not not creatures so i think it's more just more just low rolling than anything huh well i mean i guess we just played necromass pass the turn yeah i think it's more just like unfortunate like the odds of mill we milled what nine and we hit one two three four five lands a planeswalker and two creatures which is about about as bad as it can go mill wise. Uh yeah, we probably gotta probably gotta do some turtling. <laughs> Ooh, we don't want this Ginny Fay going off. That's for sure. Abonent. Well, you gotta remember too. We're going into a standard. I think that the the thinking on lands is gonna have to change a little bit because we're running out of. Oh, that Chris went cast day. Eh? We're running out of of ways to cheat on lands. There's no creature lands. There's no MDFCs. So if you're gonna run 26, 27, 28 lands, you're running just boring old lands. You're not getting any, I mean, I guess you can run like one each of the channel lands, but there is minimal value to get out of your, uh, your mana base at this point. All right, let's discard. Get back a goif. <laughs> Untap. Ooh, Urtai. Ooh. All right, double kick, double kick. This is going to be fine. This is going to be fine. The Goyf is going to save us. All right, we milled mostly lands, but there was some non-lands in there. There were some non-lands. <laughs> Ooh, Defiler of Vigor. That's a big one. Land of Stalker. Grows the team. Oh, this is this is looking uh, looking bad, looking bad. Yeah, this has went very very poorly. Um, what do we do now? So if they untap with this, they're gonna go off even more. Are we just dead? Oh yeah, we're just we're fighting the magic gods on this one, Urtai. Yeah, get rid of the defiler. <laughs> Pass the turn. You get to draw some cards. Oh, the green defiler is so incredibly far ahead of everything else. I actually have creeping in in a couple of decks. It's, I mean, super. It, it is not a lair of the Hydra or a den of the bugbear. Like, you gotta sack three creatures at sorcery speed and eventually it turns into something. Uh, but I think in, like, a very specific deck, it could be... It could be worth it just because there's not a lot of, not a lot of other options. All right, opponent. Rada. I mean, we're just barely staying alive. Well, we finally drew a land. So play the land, Liliana. I don't. I don't know if we actually have a pathway to winning from here. Unfortunately, take down Liliana. Yeah, I think we're. I think we're dead. Oh, and Yeah, Jenny Fay. I don't even. I don't know what they're doing with the elves. There's no. There's no synergy for it. Like period. Rocco, gonna draw some cards, gonna tutor something up. 
I mean, the Elf Lords have went off. But I think all of this is just because of our our poor running this game. Like, I think if we had run average, I none of this would have happened. If we had run, like, average instead of, like, the bottom 1% of possible draws, I think we just would have won before our opponent... Before our opponent had the, the opportunity to do anything meaningful. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, yeah, we're dead. All right. Eh, I mean, it was cool to see our opponent's deck go off. It was cool to see it go off. We'll we'll see. I mean, we can. People want to see elves, so we'll we'll give elves a shot. I will say, I think that uh, the salt eye deck is very very good. We got to see it be not good in that last game, but like I said, like it was just that was an incredible low roll to mill nine and hit one creature or whatever and mill all of our lands and get mana screwed. That's just uh, mathematically not something that'll happen very often, but Tarmogoyf was, it was busted. It's, if you actually build around it and are willing to embrace it and not just jam in some random deck, um, then it's actually a really, really strong card. And we have the support for it, thanks to having interaction that is built into creatures like Urtai and Mirror Shell Crab and Colossal Sky Turtle. Uh, so I, I think there's actually a, a lot of potential there, but we'll try the elves deck. We'll give, we'll give elves a try. Someone already voted elves. So I, I said we try elves. Elves, I think is like ultra jank. <clears throat> like, um, I mean, our opponent's elves deck went off. I think the problem with elves is if your opponent has any sort of interaction, your deck is really bad. You're basically dependent on more or less keeping a leaf crown visionary on the battlefield if a leaf crown visionary we saw in our opponent's case that last game they played leaf crown visionary we were super mana screwed so we couldn't do anything uh and that was able to generate card advantage and eventually win uh win them the game the problem is if your opponent plays a sweeper or even a targeted removal spell then you're left playing a lot of pretty sketchy things so we'll, we'll see we'll we'll see if elves i will this is the first deck we've played that i'm like thinking of is a very against the odds deck rather than rather than a deck that I think actually is like good but well we'll see I think that uh the the lords are going to be way better in older formats I think that explorer elves pioneer elves modern elves that's where it gets really exciting because of the new uh the new lords as far as standard there's just not a lot of good tribe members there's not even there's not even enough <laughs> run whether like complete is sweeper protection wow this is not a very elfy hand is it um <laughs> yeah that there's no synergies for it but i would be good in exactly in the situation where your opponent rests the board standard and draft are the only formats that are that are playable on early access day um you know let's just play this on elf in case we need to kill something i do think brazen upstart is not a bad card. Like three mana, four, two vigilance. When it dies, you get to replace it. Ooh, beast caller. I think beast caller is actually like a legit good card. Now get rid of the beast caller. I think that beast caller people are gonna be, I think people are gonna be surprised to find out that that card's like super good. Like I, I think it's gonna be a standard stable. This is on my top 10 list for standard. I think this card's gonna be all over. Maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong and it's a lot worse than I think, but. King Narian. King Narian's a ooh, fleet foot dancer. Uh, you know what? Let's just go. Let's just go aggro. Fleet foot dancer, get in. Any standout cards yet? What do you what do you think the best cards are so far, chat? Um Tarmogoyf in the right deck is really good. Liliana has been has been really good. The domain mechanic, I think, is has been strong. Yeah, let's take Rumor Gatherer. Rumor Gatherer is as close to a backup card advantage engine as we have. <laughs> Karn! <laughs> Karn was as bad as we thought in the one game that we saw someone playing it. We'll have to try Mono Black. I mean, I'm hyped about Mono Black, both aggro and control, honestly. All right, opponent, Wandering Emperor, main phase. Gets rid of the Fleet Foot Dancer. Well, okay. Leaf Crown Visionary. Get rid of Wandering Emperor. Oh, well, if we get to untap and start drawing some cards, that would be that would be very helpful. We played against we played against a Karn deck, and it was uh it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. 
Extraction specialist gets back the beast collar. Bank buster. Hmm. Well, okay. I guess we start drawing some cards and see what happens. Um, rumor gatherer. Draw a card. All right, another another visionary. We're we're making progress ish. Although this beast caller does scare me. This beast caller can get big pretty quick. I think Urtai is meant for a tempo expert deck with obscure interceptor and ether cha uh, ether channeler alongside Rona's vortex fading. Hope I'm very excited. How about you, Seth? Yeah, I think that uh that that's probably a shell like that or a blink shell is probably where Urtai is gonna be at its best. Yeah, I got a a janky <laughs> a janky fun version of that with a. Uh, Vesuvian Duplomancy. That seems like it should be really funny when it works. What do you think of Soul Canar the Tainted? Um, I think they kind of killed that one. Honestly, I think they, I think they kind of killed it. Uh, didn't they talk about? Didn't they talk about powering it down? I, I remember them. I think during the uh, the sneak peek stream, they were talking about this card. They spoiled the card, and when I read it, it was like that's a cool design. Its abilities just are horrible, though. Like it, it's just not offering very much value. Draw a card, drain for two. What makes demonic pack work is the abilities are actually really powerful, like powerful enough to make up for the drawback. Soul Canar, my first impression was its abilities just aren't good enough to make up for the drawback. And then when Wizards talked about it, they, were, they said something to the extent of it was like, it, it was much stronger, but the problem was it was killing people before you ever actually chose the, the last option. So we had to power it down a bunch. And I think the current version, like, it could be funny for against the odds, maybe, but even then it's just like a random value card. But yeah, I'm I, I'm pretty pretty skeptical of it, honestly. Lustful Jeans. Hey Seth, how are you doing? I can't believe it's been almost two years. What card are you most excited for? I'm looking forward to getting Painbow and building Car Super Friends in Modern. Slightly cheaper. Yeah, Car Super Friends is so fun. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Big super cheap for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh we'll probably try the the Super Friends deck. If you want to see some a Johnny action. Super friends, I think, is uh is the way to go. Well, I think we just hmm. So we kill this. Why are they pointing at each other? Oh, I see. Well, kill extraction specialist. Get that out of here. Pony gets a clue. Leaf Crown Visionary. Ah, oh, we'll keep Jetmere. Not an elf, but a good card. And then we get to attack a Johnny. Kill a Johnny. All right, play the Triumph past the turn. I mean, that was that was a decent turn. That was not not bad. And now we get to start drawing some cards, which is not. Oh, so opponent is actually kind of like super frenzy to some extent by the looks. We'll try super friends. We'll try, we'll try super friends. What do you think of Raven Man? Is Raven Man, is Raven Man good? Is it going to be good, do you think? Opponent. Wait, so three creatures, Vigilance. <clears throat> All right, so... I think we just draw a bunch of cards. Let's Gala Greeters. Draw two. Well, I mean, Leaf Crown Visionary, if it sticks out, it seems like it might be enough to actually power an elf deck. We get to scry second jet mirror to the bottom. And then, yeah, let's let's get rid of Elspeth. Kill Elspeth, pass the turn. Yeah, the full set release isn't until Friday. Uh, I wish, so the Raven Man, the thing that makes me skeptical is the token not being able to block. What was the card? Uh, ominous, was it Ominous something? What was the, what was the Roost? Didn't we just have an enchantment that 
whenever you do something, it makes a flyer, except it can't block. Oh, boy. This again. Well, we've already seen several Defiler of Vigors. Hmm. So... Well, this is gonna get this is gonna get interesting. Uh, one, two, iconoclast, no kicker, draw a card, draw a card. Make a treasure. Land to the bottom. Raise an upstart. Only draw one card. I mean, we're trying to set up for the jet mirror. This is our this is our crater hoof. This is as close as it gets to having a crater hoof in a uh, in this format. Well, we'll take the counter. All right, all right, that's fine. Pass the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're close. We're close to the hoof. We're close to the hoof win. The surprise hoof win. About it. Super sad was not welcomed in the fishbowl. Wait, who wasn't welcomed in the fishbowl? Did I miss your sub? Oh no! Oh my, my apologies. I try to welcome everyone in the fishbowl. Doldy, my apologies for the 27th month. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer and major kill joy. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what are you building first, chat? What's at the top of your personal list? What do you think of the set? Are you gonna play standard for Dominaria? All right, cracking the clue. The one thing about Defiler, like it's super powerful, but you do need green permanence in hand. I'm I'm actually wondering how good it is in a deck where you're playing Wandering Emperor, Extraction Specialist, Elspeth Resplendent, Intrepid Adversary. Like that's a that's a lot of things that aren't green. I mean opponent did find a green thing for Johnny Sleeper Agent. They they did find one. Took them some work, but they did it. Ooh, Gruel Aggro. I'm excited to play Yoda too. I haven't really figured out how to how to build it yet, but yeah, I think wizards can be pretty strong. Tomkers, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big stupid for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did the number of packs you get for pre-order go down? I don't think so. Opponent. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, so we can't do everything. We need two, we need two turns by the looks. All right, so, well, uh, Fleet Foot Dancer, draw a card, draw a card. Make a treasure. Yeah, we'll keep the Lord. We'll keep, I mean, next turn's the turn we're going for it as long as we're alive. Brazen upstart. I mean, next turn should be pretty good. Gain some life. We gotta just, we gotta not die this turn basically. And then we have a pretty epic jet mirror kill here. <laughs> <laughs> standard hoof, standard hoof. MS Mall, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop cheer for you. Just knocked out another nursing class. Hey, congratulations, Mall. That's uh, that's awesome. <laughs> Mech Titan guard. Oh, Karn is just not gonna. Mech Titan sweet. Karn, Karn will make it harder to assemble Mech Titan, I think. But found it takes up. It's a land. I assume it's going bottom. Indeed. So opponent needs to leave up removal. Draws with Bank Buster. Yeah, I, so Defiler, you gotta be very, very green. We see our opponent struggling to make this Defiler. I mean, it's still a five minute six six trample with some upside, but it is, it is a lot worse when you're not a, not a heavy green deck. I mean, I guess our opponents, they're managing to draw and do it there. So maybe it's still gonna be enough, we'll see. See if they can kill us. 
Oh, Good afternoon, Seth. Have you thought about playing Rith post combat? It feels like you could trick your opponent into making excess damage blocks that they will regret. I mean, I think that's the best bet for making uh, for making it work. Like that's that's the best bet. Well, I mean, I think we should win here, right? Hopefully, if we don't win here, I'm going to be very sad. Uh, Leaf Crown Visionary. Draw a card. Draw a card. Counter. This is this has gotta do it, right? This has gotta do it. Fleetfoot Dancer, pretty good. Jetmere. This has gotta be enough. This has gotta be enough. Trigger. Treasure. Play the land on Elf. Another Gala Greeter. And I mean, we're, we're swinging with everything. We're swinging with everything. And hopefully, hopefully this standard Crater Hoof is going to be enough. Gain some life. Land to the bottom. And I mean, yeah. Here they come. <laughs> Jatmir, Vigilance, Trample, Double Strike. Those are some big elves and opponent doesn't even try. Did not even attempt in that uh yeah, that was that was enough. That was enough. <laughs> Math is for blockers except for our opponent. They didn't even they didn't even bother. <laughs> yeah, that and that was only first strike damage too, so it was actually like 120 damage or something. <laughs> Well, that that actually worked. A reminder, real quick, that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, you can get them over at CardKingdom.com. Um, <clears throat> do you think you will build Is It Delver in DMU? Yeah. So the Is It decks, I don't have an Is It deck for today, in part because I think that Is It's probably a pretty good budget archetype, and when you have a and when you have a deck that's good and also potentially budget friendly. You got to try to use it for budget magic because there's only so many, there's only so many interesting, potentially strong and budget friendly decks. So, uh, good chance that you'll be seeing wizards in there. Uh, uh, some blue, red wizard, Belmore, whatever, whatever type action in the near future. Um, but not, not today, not today because I want to save it for budget magic. It's one of the budget archetypes I think I'm most hyped for about Standard. Sent Mono Blue Delver to Seth an email. I heard him hiss like a cat through the mail. <laughs> yeah, the Mono, Mono Blue Delver looked, uh, looked sweet. The expensive, whatever the name of the creature is, it gets cheaper based on spells in your graveyard. That's a cool payoff. I'm actually kind of like, I don't know. Delver itself has not been exciting in Standard, but maybe now that we've rotated, it'll be more exciting. Do we have a banding deck on today's stream? Ooh, well, you want to see some is it? Not coming from us. It's coming from our opponent, but there is some is it action. I'm upset about a Johnny being completed. It was my favorite planeswalker. Uh, I can I can understand that being a frustration. Although we talked about this on the last stream, I actually think that we should kill off and complete more magic characters. I think if anything, we don't kill off enough. I would kill Teferi to have your beard. Wow, if you actually killed Teferi, I might give it to you. <laughs> How about we might be able to work something out? Send me a send me a DM. <laughs> uh, I mean, <clears throat> being completed isn't necessarily irreversible, right? I'm not the most up on the on the lore, but but I think it's possible. You're rooting for the opponent's deck. I was surprised when when I was asking people about decks they wanted to see, a lot of people mentioned uh, mentioned Is it? I think this is an archetype. I don't know if it's partly because it can be budget friendly, but uh, this does seem like the Delver decks, the Is it decks, uh, they are archetypes that people seem interested in. Now let's play the land. Gala, Gala greeters. Iconoclast. Opponent. Trying to play around a counter, essentially. 
You have a Rocket Robic build. I have a couple. I don't know if they're any good, but I do. Rocket Robic's a card I'm just really hyped for. So yeah, there's a couple of a legendary decks with Rocket Robic. We haven't actually played one yet, but oh, we'll keep we'll keep moving forward. We'll get through as many decks as, as we can. Do we need a treasure? One, two, three, four, probably. All right, make the treasure. Pass the turn. <clears throat> Who will the big bad be after Frexia is defeated? So what big bads have we had in Magic? You got the Frexians. You got the Eldrazi. You got Nicole Bolas. Ugin, I guess. What else? Like, what else is there throughout history that has been... The antagonists, the the villains. Fraxi and Eldrazi, Bolas, <laughs> Oko for gameplay. Well, I was thinking more lore-wise. Like, gameplay, yeah. As far as gameplay, <laughs> Hogax and, and stuff like that definitely is uh, on the list as well. Yeah, I don't know where they go next. What about, like, a brand new set of villains? Also, like, I'm sure the Fraxians aren't going to be gone forever. I'm sure they will do the, the Fraxia set in a way where... In a way where they can come back again, you know, five years in the future or whatever. That would be that would be my guess, at least, is that Fraxians are not... Are not... Will not be done done. Yeah, Limb Duel slash the Raven Man. That is... That's a good old school one. Is there a chance we die here? All right. We're not all the way dead, but that was... That was a scary turn for our opponent. <sighs> okay, so land. Fleetfoot Dancer. Gain a couple life. Hetcha. Gain back some life. Oh, okay, no protection spell. Oh, okay, stabilizing, stabilizing. Diphon for the 17th month. I would like to see new villains. I would like to see new villains. I'd like to see... I'd like to see new villains. I'd like to see um, more characters die. I just, I want to see more churn. I want to see more changes. I think that the game would be more interesting if that is... If that is how it works. If things died more often... All right, opponent's going to draw a card. We're going to see Lone Speaker use its second ability. Welcome to the Fishbowl, by the way, Diva. Thank you for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Hey, Seth, glad to see you again. Love the top videos for Dominator United Cards for each format. My only question is about no mention of Cutdown. Uh, all right, let's turn on the land. No mention of Cutdown. I understand that Fatal Push is great. People use it for a lot of low mana stuff. Um, But having... But having it on the corner, if Solitude or Fury, my card, because ugh, ugh, ugh. I understand Fatal Push is great, and people use a lot of uh, low mana value, but having it on the corner, if Solitude or Fury, my cards become more popular, feels worth mentioning. Yeah, um, so it doesn't get Fury, does it? Isn't Fury a 3-3? Three, three? Let me, uh, yeah, Fury, so it doesn't get Fury. It does get Solitude. So Cut Down's a card. Elves have actually worked kind of well, surprisingly well. Uh, so that's a, it's a card that I've, when I first saw it spoiled, my initial thought was, uh, this is Naya Elves that we're playing. Um, my initial thought was this card could be good. Uh, I think it could be like comparable-ish to Fatal Push. Not quite as good, but close. But then the more I've thought about it, the more I've just gotten further and further off of off of that train essentially and now now i tend to think that it's maybe a sideboard card to play against aggro at best so yeah i don't know i do think there's potential it has like modern relevance as a sideboard card for narrow matchups but i think it's it's actually pretty pretty mediocre as far as the amount of stuff that it kills good against aggro but not not good enough overall so it's a card that uh, i've 
maybe one of the cards I've downgraded most since the start of spoiler season, because if you ever watch like my Twitter or even like the daily spoiler videos, you're basically seeing my like initial reaction. Like this card spoiled, what do I think about it? Gut reaction right off the top. That's what that is. And then as time goes on and you get to actually like look at the metagame, look at more decks, kind of think about it more in depth. That's a card that for me is just got a pretty, pretty meaningful drown grade, I would say. Well, let's just kick this and smack our opponent for a bit of damage. Boom. Take four. Six would have made it a lot better. In standard, missing out on on three threes is actually kind of kind of annoying. Like, I think that's actually, like, kind of a big issue. Yeah, Iconoclast, I think, is a good card. I just could see playing just, like, a generic rule deck. Um... Uh, good in elves. Elves needs all the all the tribe members it can get. Ooh, Jetmere. Well, I think we. Hmm. Ha. Huh. Well, play this on elf. How do we do this? Man, let's Gala Greeters. Gala Greeters. Make a treasure. Hit you a bit. Overall, I do love the uncommons from the set, even if cut down isn't that good. Yeah, oh, I mean, I think the uncommons from the set are great. And I don't want to, like, minimize cut down. Like, I do think there's a rule for cut down. And that's to, to fight aggro decks, essentially. That's uh, that's what it does very well. But I just, I, I, I don't think it's a, a main deck fatal push for a staple of a format style removal spell. I, I think it's more of a, a disfigure, really. Like, it's kind of like, just, and that's not a mark against his figure. His figure is a great card. If you got to cheaply kill a, an aggro threat, a goblin guide type threat, it's great. It's like a card that you're very happy to have access to. But this figure is also not a card that you're, yeah, we're getting smacked this game. Um, it's also not a card that you're going to play four of in your main deck, usually, unless the meta is really skewed in aggro direction. Abonent. Yeah, being able to kill Ref Rafine if you have the mana up is nice for one mana. That is that is uh, definitely helpful. I mean, we'll see in, in Standard. I think I, uh, I was kind of talking more about Modern, honestly, uh, in Pioneer, where I think it's, it's pretty more fringe in those formats. In Standard... <sighs> yeah, I, still, I guess I don't have a very good sense of where it's going to end up in Standard still. Yeah, this is the... This is a game that we're actually just getting crushed in. <laughs> we haven't had too many of those so far, but this one is definitely one of them. All right, well, we've crown visionary. Do not much. <laughs> Die brutally. I mean, I guess we'll play Jetmir. It's not really doing anything, but sure. Run it out, uh, get some counters. <laughs> And I guess we got to pass the turn. So many good Planeswalkers. I am a little worried. <sighs> I am a little worried about about the Planeswalkers in Standard. I, I've been worried about, like, Esper Planeswalkers for a while. The Planeswalkers are so good. Show them what you got. Yeah, I mean, it's Esper. I don't know. This was the, the deck that I was like, how is this not just, like, the best deck by a huge margin after rotation. Because it just loses nothing. And it was already like a top tier deck or very close to it. And now gains Liliana and gains some, some other stuff too. So what set am I most excited about next year? So the set I'm most excited about next year is definitely the going back to Phyrexia sets. I just, I've always loved Mirrodin. Mirrodin, I mentioned it before, but those were the first cards I really played with when I started playing were original Mirrodin block. So I've just always loved Mirrodin and artifact sets because of that. So opponent, loot away is their hand, plays an Infernal Grasp, kills our, but yeah, I mean, we're, I have, I think I've officially given up on this game. We are not going to beat this deck. Question though, what uh what cards from the new set does our is our opponent playing? Are there any? Huh. Yeah, we didn't see any new cards, did we? So is this just like pre-rotation pre-rotation Esper? <clears throat> Interesting. 
Hype for Ixalan 2.0 because that's when I started Magic. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to go back to uh It'll be interesting to go back to to Ixalan. Ixalan, I don't know, I got mixed feelings because the last one was just eh, eh. I don't know. I, I was not a huge Ixalan fan. I'm hoping that it's better this time. Uh, I think it's probably going to be funny because I think because Ixalan was so underpowered last time, I think they're going to like massive, probably massively push it and it's going to be busted. And then because Eldraine was so overpowered, they're probably going to pull it back and it's going to be bad. So I think we're going to see the, <laughs> the reverse essentially where last time like Ixalan, all anyone talked about is how underpowered it was. And all anyone talked about with Eldraine is how it was broken. And now I think it, we might have the, the opposite situation where Eldraine is the set that people are like, eh, I don't know, this isn't that good, but I bet, I bet they're going to juice Ixalan. Yeah. Let's try Mono Black Aggro. I'm curious. I want to see, I want to see how good Stronghold Arena is essentially. So this deck, Mono Black Aggro, this one actually does have a couple cut downs in it. Cause I think it works very, uh, at it's best in aggro decks, but this deck is trying to be super aggressive. Essentially we are maxing out at three mana. We're Stronghold Arena, that's our Dark Confidant, drawing his cards as we attack. We got a million one drops, we get the new Skeleton Recursive one drop, we get to see a Valve Sleeper for the first time. Back it up with some removal, attack, 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 and hope for the best, essentially, is the, the idea of Mono Black Aggro. So let's let's do some Mono Black Aggro-ing. We have not played Weatherlight Zombies yet, although I still wanna play Weatherlight Zombies. We can uh, we can get to uh, some Weatherlight Zombies sometime. I think Ixalan is going to push the tribes a ton. Dino Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I mean, it's it's got to, right? I think it got to. Soldiers. Oh, we have so many decks to get to. All right, so votes for for the, the zombie deck. Votes for soldiers. Maybe I'll start. Ooh, double stronghold arena. All right. We'll try this. We'll try no one drop somehow, even though we have like 16 one drops. But... We do got our bobs. Bob for days. All right. Blade of the Oni. Go. Abundant. Mountain. Blood tie. The Harvester. Well, Landon. Graveyard Trespasser. And hit ya. Well, hopefully next turn we can start drawing cards and refueling. That would be the... That would be the dream. The nightmare is Liliana plus Blood Tithe Harvester killing our board, and then these do kind of nothing. <laughs> kind of literally nothing. Ah, uh, no. I don't think the kicker is essential. Like, it's nice if you can do it, but I don't think it's worth... I don't think it's worth playing bad mana to make it work. Well, all right. Stronghold Arena... Stronghold Arena. Get in with the Blade of the Oni. Okay, Evolve Sleeper. And cut down. Okay, those are those are two pretty good hits. Those are those are good. Two life, two cards. Some removal. Any interest in playing Zur in Standard? Seems good with enchantments we got in Dominaria. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to build a Zur deck, although I have not figured out how to build a Zur deck yet. Uh, it's, for me, it's much easier to build decks once I actually have all the cards in one place. The, like, trying to build decks from Scryfall or, like, Gatherer, I just, I can't do it. I can't do it. So the the more complicated decks, I think the, the trickier ones like Zur, are gonna be a lot easier to build once uh, once we get all the cards on on Arena or Moto. I'm not really sure. Like, so what would you suggest doing with Zer? What is what is your Zer plan? So Zer, just so you know what we're talking about, Zer Eternal Schemer, three mana, one for flying, gives enchantment creatures Death Touch, Lifelink, Hexproof, and you can turn a non aura enchantment into a creature, which will be an enchantment creature, and have all those abilities for two mana. So I think that's kind of what you want to do with Zer. The the challenging part is this is the only card that does what it does. There's no other way in standard to turn a to turn an enchantment into a into a creature like that. There he is, opponent, kills a thing. 
and all right kills even more things and makes a treasure and oh, fable the mirror breaker well okay kill that Well, here we go. No, no fear. There's no fear. No fear at all. <laughs> oh, boy. Tenacious Underdog is a lot for a deck like this to slog through. Or not Tenacious Underdog. Fable the Mirror Breaker. That might actually be a, a reason. A reason that maybe this deck will be worse than it looks. Yeah, we're... There's just, like, so many things that are two creatures in one. All right, we drew a bunch of cards, but they're not doing anything. I have no dad. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sagas seem like a good a good option, although they're pretty temporary. Like that's kind of the the awkward part. Hollow haunting makes sense. Opponent gets in, getting all their free creatures, eating our graveyard. Yeah. And one of the risky parts about Stronghold is uh, if you can't actually finish the game with it, you got to stop attacking. I think this deck needs some life gain. Uh, there's not really good options for life gain. I think there's, I don't know, is there is there any life gain in the deck? You can't, uh, yeah. There's not a, there's not a like gifted Aetherborn or something. So Graveyard Trespasser gains life. Uh... Okaiba Gang Reckoner gains a gains a little bit of life. So there are some sources of incidental life gain, but there's not a Shield Red. So the problem with Shield Red is yes, it gains life, but flipping four drops to your your Dark Confidant is is probably going to uh is probably going to lose you so much life that it doesn't make up for it. March of Ratchet Sorrows, that could be worth considering in a life gain slot. Only one mana. So I think if you're playing Dark Confidant effects, you gotta be you gotta be super aggro. You gotta you gotta keep your curve low. Like the, the curve needs to top out at a pretty low. You can't you just can't be flipping four drops and five drops. It's too way too easy to die. Fraxian Missionary is in the wrong colors, unfortunately. Uh yeah, that, uh, once you get in other colors, then you have lifelink. But yeah, I don't think... I mean, if you want to build a like an Orzhov deck or something, then I think that would be a different deck, but that would be something that you could do for sure. But I think that would be a, a whole different archetype. We have a new donation from Dan Wildfire. User to turn Necro Duality into a creature, along with Arcane Adaptation. We'll have to be an Historker Pioneer. Also, this may make me reinstall Arena and play Standard. Ooh, let me, let me see, Doug. Is it Tempo? People are so hyped about, <laughs> people are so hyped about Is it Tempo? It really, it's really, really interesting. Just how many people love the, love the idea of the, the Belmore deck. I didn't realize it was such a fan favorite archetype, but uh, so many people. The list looks uh, very sweet. Also, like, it's such a good budget deck. Like, <laughs> it's got 13 total rares and mythics. And half of those, more than half of those, are just the mana base. The Shivan Reef and the Storm Carve Coast. So, it's like a deck that looks powerful and it's super budget friendly, which is, is nice. Arena can gain... Hey, what's up, uh, Digorgo? I love you, too. Yeah, Arena can gain six like it if you can kick it. That is that is true. Although then you still got like ah. you have a whole other question there, like is whatever you gain from Hmm. Is whatever you gain from uh from Stronghold Arena kicking it, is it worth the cost of what it would do to your mana in a in an aggro deck like this. Ledger Shredder number two. All right, let's uh, hopefully get rid of that. You got Spell Pierce, seriously? Okay, no Spell Pierce, that's good news. Well, Ledger Shredder number two down, opponent's hopes and dreams crushed. <laughs> oh, Lilia, 
don't let anyone tell you that Liliana's bad. <laughs> Just don't believe them. When someone says Liliana's bad, no, it's not bad. Liliana's very good. Infantry returns, sure. Well, I guess we just... Yeah, let's just flip this. Pwn's only got one card in hand. If we're going to flip it, we might as well flip it now. Fading hope? Consider, okay. Sure. My dream is to get the squad on board, Adeliz and Viran. All right, opponent finds a land. Well, we'll smack you. Smack you a little bit, down to 17. We do have pain lands to potentially other colors while still being mono black. But then like, ah, are you gonna gain life in that scenario is the question. Like if you add a bunch of pain lands to your deck to try to gain life off of Stronghold Arena, is the end result that you gain life in that scenario? Or or do you just end up spending, <laughs> spending all the life that you would potentially gain by uh by using your pain lands like do you actually net life in that exchange ryan k welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super thank you thank you thank you i think mean, you definitely gotta avoid being um now well, let's get in and draw a card we go up to nine this infantry is getting big it's getting big all right so we hit a land play the land Hmm. This enters tapped. We do need to not be dead. <laughs> Ideally. Ideally not dead. Can we win next? Maybe we just try to win next turn. Maybe that's better. All right, let's Graveyard Trespasser. Eat a Ledger Shredder, gain a life. Conscript. Yeah, I mean, I think we just trust they don't draw the double strike spell, and then we should win. <laughs> okay, draw three. Opponent's going big. Plays the land. Really? Inspired idea. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I have not seen anyone cast that. Hey, what's up, Kelsey? Good to have you. Better late than never, as they say. But it gets in. It says. Okay. <laughs> oh, they were saying good game for, for us to win. Oh, got him. New shoulder gains life. Pretty good body. Why not that one? So we'll have to play mono black control. So... My thinking is you got to be as low curve as, as possible. I don't know if I want to play four drops in a in the Dark Confidant deck. I mean, maybe you could play like one shield red. But I think if you're going to play the, the Stronghold Arena, I think you got to be you gotta be as low to the ground as possible or you're going to just take so much damage flipping stuff. It works. I mean, the card advantage is nice. Oh, this is this is kind of like let's let's see. Let's see. We'll try the control build in a minute. Let's let's do another aggro build. All right, let's pull up our deck list. All right, so here's here's our deck list for the day. What if we played? So we're playing mono black aggro. I'm gonna bold stuff that we've played. We've played domain. We played boomer jund. We played salt igoif and naya elves. Oh boy, one, two, three, four. We've only got through five. Am I missing any? Wow, we have so many cool decks to check out. <laughs> we have so many decks. Well, let me let me know what you what else you're hyped for. I mean, usually on early access day, we don't we can't get through all all of them. We get through as many as possible. Things that I'm hyped to try that we haven't tried yet. Some people have said Super Friends. I wouldn't mind trying out Super Friends. Um. I think just seeing if Duplomancy can do anything. Although maybe Duplomancy ends up being like an against odds card or something. But I'm curious. There's been someone who's really been asking for zombies. So maybe we try some zombies. I'm also interested in the Teferi untapping Lotus synergy to see if that's any good. I'm also, I guess I'm interested. I built most of these decks. So I guess I'm interested in all of them. <laughs> when it comes, I, I keep going from deck to deck. So I guess I just kind of want to see all of them. <laughs> Opponent. 
the dragon deck uh the idea of it was definitely super cool the the channel fire dragon idea oh yes Ex uh, exclamation point deck will uh will take you to the dock oh hammer and wow opponents getting frisky all right sure it's us well, play a land, play the saga, play a valve sleeper. I, I guess it's race time. Mono red versus mono black, who is faster? That is the question. Would love to see the other Jund or Rakdos dragon deck. Now you mid-range, see, see if Rith is actually, actually good. Wow, going face. Sending a message. All right, sure. We dropped to 13. Hmm. Now let's, huh. Level this up. Blade of the Oni. Hit you for four. Do you have any ideas for a blue green fairy and commander other than using heroic spells or mutate? I've been trying to think of something, but it keeps coming back to two color over or nothing else. So honestly, I've been I've been hyped to try mutate with it because it just because it sounds funny. That's one of the decks I really want to try. Outside of that, you can cast auras on it. You could probably build like I don't know, infect or something with pump spells. Yeah, March of Wretched Sorrows, I like I like that idea. That's one that I, I'm coming around to maybe that being a very good removal spell for this deck. That's, I think that ways to sneak in incidental life gain that are low mana value are, are definitely very, very powerful in a deck like this. Well, I think it's, it's arena time. <laughs> Mono red, that's fine. We will, we will accept, we'll accept the damages. Hit ya. Yeah, we'll just hit ya. Down to eight. Stronghold Arena. Okay. Hitting land is good. Tenacious Underbob. Bestow. Bestow is another fun way to build around it. Yeah, I think March is... I'm gonna add March. I think March is worth adding. Chandra. Well, I mean, mono black feels solid, solid-ish. <laughs> I don't know if this deck wants uh, wants meatball. <laughs> We're kind of going wide with creatures. I don't know if we want to meatball away our own our own stuff. Morning, Funny you say infect because I looked at that and it does not work well because there's no way to give her infect in those colors. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah, I guess I was thinking of, like, decks that would play pump spells. But then I guess if Ivy doesn't have Infect... I mean, you could use the equipment, but there's, like, one... One equipment that does that, essentially. And that's... It, I don't know if that would work well with... Yeah, maybe Infect's not the best idea, actually. Um... Hmm. Sure. We'll take it. Down to nine. GG. GG. Mono black. Did you see the five color legendary human deck I sent you? When uh when did you send it to me? If you said oh I should have played a land so we could level up. Yeah, that was a that was a small mistake. Sh hopefully, all right. Does not does not actually matter. Well, that's Mono Black Aggro. I do think that uh, March of Wretched Dreams is a good addition. If you ever need the decks, exclamation point deck. All right, so what are what are we going to next? What are we going to next? Oh, I don't think so. Twitter Twitter is... Oh, was in response to me asking for deck lists? Maybe. If it's on Twitter, if it's not in response to something, the odds of it getting lost are pretty high. So maybe, I looked through so many deck lists over the last couple days. <laughs> it's possible that I saw it. Uh, zombies, Vant. All right, so, okay, here's here's what's coming up next. These are the things people are asking for. Zombies, Super Friends. Zombies, Super Friends. 
Uh, world spell looks, yeah, we can try world spell. I'm not really sure what the world spell deck's trying to do. You should, uh, you should send it to me, our Lord Stone Room Crow. Do you have a, do you have a link? All right, zombies and super friends. Those, are, those would be the next two, zombies and super friends. So whether like zombies, it's, uh, uh, so one thing I dislike about the deck, not that it's bad, but it's kind of just zombies. Zombies itself didn't really get much support from the set. So it's the same zombies as you've seen before. Feldstinger, Headless Riders, Tainted Adversary, Undead Butler, Skulls Cobbs, Champion of the Parish. The addition to the deck is Weatherlight Complete, which when you think about Weatherlight Complete, you think of, you think of a sack deck essentially, Zombies kind of do that. There's decay zombies. You're exploiting stuff. Whether or not it's going to be fast enough to turn on weather like complete, we're going to find out. I haven't got to play this deck yet. Uh, basically, it's a, an excuse to play Necro Duality. I will take any any excuse to Necro Duality. So this and then and then Super Friends will be the the next two. Wait, where did we lose zombies? Oh, there they are. All right. Zombie away. I'm intrigued by Weatherlight like, Completed. I really am. Yeah, so the problem I keep running into with the world spell is there's just there's not anything great to put into play. That's the that's the disappointing part. If you search like search standard by mana value, there's really not much over six mana. I think that we gotta <sighs> So we'll mess around with it. I'm expecting we get like some massive artifacts in future sets. Wizards has already kind of hinted at that. And then I think World Spell is going to be more interesting, even though it is a bad tooth and nail, but it's a bad tooth and nail that's in standard. We haven't had tooth and nail in standard for like <laughs> two decades. But if you're putting like six mana spells into play, it seems a little bit less exciting just because just because like it's costing seven mana. So I feel like it's gonna be most exciting when you're like slamming, you know, uh, an Emrakul into play or something. Well, no, it's just, you want big, expensive, powerful things. If you're gonna, if you're gonna play the, if you're gonna play something like the world spell, you really want to be putting a lot of mana value worth of things into play. If you're playing seven mana and putting a, you know, a, a four drop into play, you might as well just be playing the four drop. <laughs> you're you're kind of doing yourself a disservice by, ooh. So this is the most obvious home for Weatherlight Completed. Is just jam it in the the Oni Call Anvil Sacrifice deck and trust that it's going to be good. Hmm. Well, okay, Fell Singer. Do some exploiting. Draw some cards. All right, we find a land and a weatherlight complete, so that's not the worst about it. Oh, double anvil. Double anvil gets scary. Yeah, I mean, this seems like the deck that should be able to turn on the weatherlight completed fastest. Especially if you have two anvils. Like, this is going to get turned on at lightning speed now. Yeah, we're, well, we might be dying to the weather like completed. <laughs> Come to think of it. Experimental Synthesizer. The world spell deck uses Invoke Justice Cheat World Spell into play ahead of schedule. Ah, uh, so that, that makes sense. If you're getting world spell for five mana rather than seven mana, that does, that does change the math quite a, quite a bit. <laughs> Well, there's our weatherlight like, completed. There's another skull scab. We got a handful of these overcharged amalgams that I'm not sure they're actually doing much, but that will make some tokens. Tainted adversary going bottom. Oh, but theirs is gonna turn on so quickly. Uh, I guess we gotta go attacking. Get him with the zombies. Uh, Giralf is not in this deck. Can play Giralf is like a is like a one of. Giralf suffers from the fact that it itself is not actually a zombie. Oh boy, break! Oh, all right, GG. <laughs> That's a Meag massacre and a and a braids. About it, uh, you gotta do exclamation point deck to uh to get the decks. Uh, yeah, that's the Meag massacre. 
X zero, okay. Huh. I'm surprised they didn't actually just meat hook there. Meat hook turn on the weather like completed seems pretty good. Instead, we are continuing to live. I swear we scribed this to the bottom. <laughs> I swear. I swear. I swear. Well, uh, I guess Overcharge Amalgam is going to have to somehow save us. <laughs> somehow, some way. Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> the reason to play zombies is to get a winning board and then protect it with Amalgam. Yeah, we're not really at the winning board state, and we have drawn many, many, many amalgams. <laughs> Way more amalgams than we could possibly do. Ah, uh, if our opponent just turned on that weather league complete, we're so dead, but they didn't for some reason. Yeah, that was idea. Oh. Wow, that's bad. That was the idea that the decay zombies would help turn stuff on, but... In practice, yeah, we're we're kind of in trouble here, kind of dead, honestly. So we get to stop and up next list, but it's a big stack, biggest stack of the day. Well, they're like complete to the bottom, but our opponent's weather like complete is turning on. Ours is, ours is not, and now there's also an up next list, and opponent's got a five five. Plum Pudding! Welcome to the Fishball. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, opponent's going to draw very many cards. <laughs> yeah, Weatherly like, Complete's looking kind of insane here. <laughs> okay. I mean, maybe, I don't know, do we have, is there any chance that we, we can stay in this game? Do we want to land? What are we looking for? I guess a removal spell, really. But opponent's just going to totally refuel their hand here with his Weatherlight Complete. All right. I mean, I have gained a respect for Weatherlight Complete here. Not for us, but yeah, I can only play standard today. Oh, third. Third only call anvil is GG. GG and a half. Yeah. And opponent digs up. Yeah, we're super dead. Well, playing the land on zombie. Go to combat. Everything at our opponent, but it just, none of this actually matters. We're just dead. Hey! We're seeing the power. Yeah, I mean. I'm honestly not sure if whether like completed is is fast enough to play in zombies. Zombies can turn it on eventually, but maybe you got to be a a more dedicated sacrifice deck to really make it work. Variant, variant, like is turn two play a thing exploit or turn three I guess play a thing exploit get a counter. The next turn play a thing exploit get a counter. Hope something trades in combat. Like I don't know. Ugh. After playing that, this is the only game we played with the deck. We'll do, we'll do one more, and then we'll switch. I feel like, like I would probably just rather have more necro dualities. Necro dualities is like legit amazing in zombies. I I think I'd rather just double up all my zombies forever rather than be like, oh, eventually I exploit and draw an extra card. So I I think that maybe weather like complete is just like not good enough. Add a couple copies of corpse cobble. I mean that would turn on weather like completed quicker although is sacrificing our board would that be would that be worth it to lose our board oh boot it seems like decent decent wrath protection possible well would it be i mean it's wrath protection but can is it worth playing a huh is it worth a slot in your deck? Maybe it's a sideboard. Maybe a sideboard option if you run into a a deck that has Wraths. I don't know if I'd want to spend a main deck slot on, on Wrath Protection, especially with Farewell being one of the Wraths, which just also gets weather like completed. <laughs> Opponents seems to think they're going to be crewing their weather like completed, but 
Oh, Pona's got the Pona's got the dream. It's the Aster, so they can actually turn on whether they completed. I mean, that's the other way you can do it. Is there is one card in? I mean, I guess like you could turn it into a a creature with some in soul artifact effect, but yeah. But Aster is a card that can actually make it work. Well, that's uh, looking like a looking like a good draw. Looking like a good draw. And uh, I think we're just super dead here. Yeah, Mobilizer Mac, if you can uh, can crew it, can uh, can also help. Uh, it's fun to see vehicles seeing play. Vehicles were pretty hyped during Kamigawa, but they uh, they just have not really done anything in Standard. I think they're just uh, what's the issue with vehicles in Standard? Why why have vehicles like literally seen zero play? I mean, I guess like Reckoner Bankbuster draws a card in a control deck sometime, but why have vehicles as an actual an archetype seen zero play in standard? I was thinking Aster is in Mardu Greasefang in Pioneer. I could I could see that. Like that would be a way you could actually crew your Parhelion, although hmm. How often are you getting Parhelion on the battlefield without Greasefang? I would assume like a very very low percentage of the time um yeah we're just super dead all right well enough of that <laughs> Seth says saga stunk before Kamigawa and vehicles were hype I mean how many of those Kamigawa sagas actually see play <laughs> if you look at the if you look at the Kamigawa sagas there's one good one right but is there, is that, it? what's, what's beyond Fable of the Mirror Breaker is actually, actually good. I'm, I'm curious. Let's, I actually, let's look at it. I'm curious. Are, am I missing something? Or are there other ones that are seeing like a meaningful amount of play? Saga is Kamigawa. So, so I guess like, Machiko's Reign of Truth, just as a pump spell, has seen some play. None of the blue ones see play. None of the black ones see play. So, Faces and, and Fable the Mirror Breaker have seen play. None of the green ones see play. Hedasugu has seen some play, but not because of... Not so much because it flips into a creature, just because blowing up everything one mana value or less in modern actually does something. Eh. I mean, we've played Kami War, and Kami War is uh, is sweet. Uh, I don't know. I think. Eh. I don't know. I don't know if it's it's completely off base to consider the sagas from Kamigawa bad. <laughs> well, I mean, is the general feeling that the sagas are good, or that like Fable of the Mirror Breaker is good? All right, let's try the. We said we'd try Super Friends next. So let's. So, Super Friends, you play all the Planeswalkers. It's as simple as that. You try to ramp into them. As Urza assembles the Titans, let you activate them multiple times. That's it. Play the Planeswalkers. Play as many as possible. I mean. <laughs> I mean, okay. So, <laughs> you do have to remember, like. Let me see if I can find the card. Like, at the time, at the time during spoiler season, people were like, oh, teachings of the carrot. This is going to be like busted. This is going to be the greatest card. And I'm like, we got like <laughs> Prosperous Innkeeper. We got Gallag Reader. Like, eh, I don't know. I think compared to like what people were saying, I think if you say the sagas are bad, in general, I think you might be more right than wrong still. <laughs> compared to like teachings of Karen is gonna be a standard staple or whatever, I would rather be like teachings of Karen is bad. I think I, I, I'm at peace with uh with having that opinion, as opposed to like saying that teachings of Karen's gonna gonna be the new the newest all-star that's gonna, you know, break standard. Um, so what does rotate? Sadly, Zendikar, because, sadly, Zendikar, because, um, no MDFCs, but we lose Zendikar, we lose Strixhaven, Adventures in the Forgotten Realm, and Keldheim. So, what we have left is, 
The two Innistrad sets. Well, that's some Planeswalkers. We have the two Innistrad sets. Hopefully we hit our lands. Uh, two Innistrad sets. Oh boy, that's a that is not a land. Come on, Magic Gods. How about a how about a land? Tenacious Underbob. Well, that's a land. We will accept a land. Play the Loam Speaker. Pass the turn. If the Loam Speaker lives, we can get out Wandering Ember, which would be pretty good. Captain Norfgood, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What is the biggest? What is the biggest loss in standard? Well, oh, the saddest broker's ascendancy. Oh, all right. Well, without lands, we will not play many planeswalkers. Shield raid for our opponent. Goose attacking. All right, we draw a land, but I think it might just be too late to actually matter. We're already facing down a pretty, pretty big board full of uh, of things. Missing a land for a turn is sometimes all it takes. Oh, Wandering Emperor. I mean, if there's an issue with Super Friends, it's that the curve is... I mean, Planeswalkers are kind of expensive, so the curve is kind of high. Eat the shield, right? Up to 14. Blizzard Brawl, yeah. Green not having a Fatal Push, I feel like, is going to make Standard better, though. All right, so opponent eats a bunch of stuff. Hmm. All right, well... <laughs> Not going as planned. Our opponent has drawn many lands. Opponent. Goes to combat. Well, I guess we kill it. But yeah, this is this is a depressing start for, uh, for the Super Friends. So much power in hand, but so little ability to cast it here. Graveyard Trespasser. I feel like our deck's mocking us by giving us lands when they don't matter anymore. <laughs> oh, we'll make a tree, folk. Oh! The moment when you can build your friend's deck or you're kind of scared to play against it. <laughs> About it, Tenacious Underdog with Blitz. All right, well, I mean, good hand, Mono Black, good hand. The moment when you build your friend's deck and then you're kind of scared to play against it. Yeah, well, all right. So that one, I don't think we learned anything other than missing land drops is uh, not a not a good way to do much. Shakedown Heavy is just better than Arena. Hmm. So you think Shakedown Heavy is better than Arena? Maybe. It dies to, uh, it dies to creature removal, though. Have you noticed we've played against someone named Freelancer, like, I don't even know, a hundred different times? <laughs> like, every other match we play is someone against uh, named Freelancer who who has had a different deck every... I don't know if there's, like, some weirdness where they're accidentally... There's a whole bunch of people named that, but we've played against someone named Freelancer, like, every other game almost. Opponent says good game. Well... Lana or Loom Speaker, go. If I just got back in Arena, what's the best format to play for fun? So I think it really depends on... Why well, are we going to get mana screwed out of this again? Kadama. All right. Partisan on, I guess, Planeswalker. But our opponent does get to get in with this Kadama here. Faces of... Hazan. Uh, so it really depends on what you enjoy. I think standard would be the... Jeez. Maybe our opponent was saying good game because <laughs> they felt like they had the, the best possible draw. Um, yeah, let's just... Let's just pass. We're not going to play this... We're not going to play this card. What does card do? Nothing. <laughs> the correct answer is nothing. <laughs> All right. Wandering Emperor... Get rid of this Kadama. None of these shenanigans, opponent. Out of here. Wow, they're playing Tamiyo Safekeeping. All right, well, sure. Um, hmm. That does complicate things now, doesn't it? That does complicate things. So opponent's going to have two creatures. 
Yeah, that's... Oh, that living is actually super bad. Hey, what's up, Slitters? This is, uh... This is, uh, Bant Super Friends deck we're trying. Uh, there's one Karn just because I wanted to see if it was bad as I thought, which... Feeling like it at the moment. <laughs> huh. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Well, I guess we make a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, we're just going to cash in the Wandering Emperor, I guess. Let your slaves do the Ottawa Urza symbols the Titans? Wow. I really do not know about the AI for any of this stuff. Um, bottom, bottom... Yeah, top top. Tag and Elspeth. Yeah, next turn should be sweet. We should get to play multiple Planeswalkers next turn. Opponent flips. That's fine. We're not dead. Opponent has not gotten a single modified creature either. Opponent. GG's again. Passes. Well, Elspeth for free. Take it down. Broker's Ascendancy. To fairy. Tick it up. Untap a land. Headquarters. No attacks. Counters on everything. Yeah, the Twitch overlay is so good. Do you think a prowess deck will be a thing in standard? I think that there's a. I think that there's a decent chance. Okay, double double trouble time, double trouble time. So, can we ultimate? We can. So, flow to mana, take up to fairy. No, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. No, no, yes. Ultimate to fairy. Take up Elspeth. Tick down Elspeth. Get a loam speaker. Phyrexian mana a Johnny. Tick up. Get a red. Tick up. Uh to the bottom. Karn living le Karn, Karn living legacy, might as well. <laughs> Boom, power stones for days. How do you beat it? <laughs> you are go. <gone. laughs> uh, I mean, that was a that was a good turn. Oh, we get to untap all of our lands. I forgot we ultimated. Ooh, it's getting even better. So, let's make a power power stone. Take up. Put some counters on you. Tick up. Can we draw something? Yes, Wandering Emperor. Tamio. <laughs> I mean, just playing all the Planeswalkers doesn't seem bad. Tap you. Go? <laughs> Untap it all, draw a card. You can defend the temple. That's a that's a real card. That's a real card. We actually got a kind of a combo here where we can wandering emperor to get the stuff that we tap down. So add the wandering emperor to the mix. Get rid of Kadama. We are going to uh Ultimate and Planeswalkers, I think. Emblem of Johnny. See if we can poison you. <laughs> <laughs> Emblem Karn, why not? Might as well. Karn did a thing. Oh, Tamio? All right, I guess we Emblem Tamio. That seems kind of cool. Ticked out, ticked out Elspeth. Broker's Ascendancy. Yeah, more, more of those seems fine. Uh, play a land. Make a tree folk. Put a counter on the tree folk. 
play another a Johnny. Wait, did we activate a Johnny? We did. Okay, play another a Johnny. <laughs> wow, I mean, I feel a little bad for our opponent, but this is also kind of sweet. Tick it up. Land to the bottom. Hit ya for... S oh, that's right. We I forget. We get to untap all of our stuff, so we could be beating our opponent down. I'm sorry, opponent. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. I mean, it is... I get confused for fan... Well, like, the first game where we lost, we... We were mostly losing because uh, we were mana screwed. We'll see. We'll see. This game we had mana and things went kind of insane. A moment. Sack secluded draw a card. I I really wanna I really wanna see if we can poison him. But we're winning with damage, unfortunately. Up opponent. Opponent. Alright, another wandering emperor. More poison. Kill your your token. We can't have that token sticking around. I am almost back to see you. Draw with Tamio's notebook. We need two more creatures or planeswalkers. Uh, cycle. Come on, infect kill, infect kill. Broker's ascendancy. Well, all right. Um, take up a jotty. Oh, we're not gonna get there. We're gonna win with damage, I think. Yeah, we're going to win with damage, aren't we? Hmm. All right. All right, all right, all right. We'll do the respectful thing and make our opponent die. Mega tree folk. Broker's ascendancy. <laughs> I feel bad if it's obviously lethal on board. I feel bad about not killing the opponent. That seems a little bad manners, I think. <laughs> I refuse to make Karn look good. <laughs> <laughs> I refi I'd rather die. <laughs> Karn, I mean, what did Karn actually do? Nothing, right? We ticked it up a few times. <laughs> I mean, that was a good game. That was a super good game. All right, let's let's see. Was is this deck more like the first game where we did nothing and got run over or more like the second game where we ultimated like five planeswalkers? That's true. Karn did pay for the cycling. Cycling triumphs were free. Yeah, that's that's a thing. That's a thing. The power of Karn, free cycling. It's it's Fluctuator the Planeswalker. <laughs> Urza assembles the Titan, yeah. I mean, if you can get it down with a board full of Planeswalkers, it's kind of kinda bonkers. Also, during spoiler season, I was a little like, I don't know how good Sten's going to be. We got a lot of other cards that are like this. But I think that being able to name Planeswalker is actually like kind of a meaningful upside. And makes it sort of a sweet ramp spell for these decks. Because now we, like, play this, get to play full price a Johnny, and just start ticking up. Like, that's 10. That's that's actually a sweet ramp spell. And it can potentially be doing that multiple times in a turn. So I think that if there's ever a deck to to make 10 good, that Super Friends is, like, the perfect home for it. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could have played Karn, but I'd rather play a, a real Planeswalker. <laughs> It's funny they made the one front mana filter creature only once per turn because they were scared of card. Yeah. Ooh, broker. My goodness. Uh, yeah, this is looking looking good. Do they discard something amazing? What is... Actually, we might need that land. Titan Olivia. Huh. Yeah, I guess that's kind of scary. So if they reanimate Olivia and get Titan of Industry, are we dead? Mostly. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Mistakes may have been made. All right. Broker's hideout. Now we lose land anyway. Yeah, there there might have been a, a small, a small mistake made here. <laughs> oh, Karn. Are we really playing Karn? We're really playing Karn. I regret everything. <laughs> Power Stone. Got him. <laughs> Hit ya. Yeah, I'm actually super scared what our opponent's gonna do here. 
there is uh, there is a four mana reanimation spell, right? That costs you a bunch of life, but it exists. And they have it. Yeah, that's the that's the full that's the full dream. Olivia. Wow, that is this is like against the odds reanimator dream opponent. Olivia into Titan of Industry. Everything has haste. Murders all the planeswalkers in the world. Except for Karn. Poner doesn't even care about Karn. And now we get to pay mana to try to draw land. Wow, Karn is so sad. Just the time is for <laughs> all right, it did hit a land. That's that's good. That's good. Well, we got to play Elspeth and tick down to hit a land. Like this farewell is our our one chance. It's our one hope. All right. Well, good turn, Apota. Good turn. Yeah, Karn, too much loyalty. Stronger than Olivia and a ton of industry put together. <laughs> I mean, so Karn did do something there. Like, in Karn's defense, it actually did a did a thing that was, like, sort of relevant wow oh my god this is all coming up opponent they get to take the farewell and win right yeah that is huh? what did our opponent not read farewell i'm so confused okay sure huh Oh, this is like a really bad thought seize. Okay. Ah, yes. They... Target opponent reveals a hand, choose a creature or planeswalker. Yeah, that's that's pretty janky. Well, we will uh Creatures, Enchantments, Graveyards. Yeah, that that should be fine. Well, staying alive. We lost many planeswalkers, but we're staying alive, opponent plays a land. Fable the Mirror Breaker, trying to get things reassembled. Well, speaking of assembling, let's see if we can assemble some Titans. We're going to start on level one. Hmm. Well, we definitely want Wandering Emperor and probably a Johnny. Uh, let's show them a Johnny. So get the Ajani, pass the turn, about it. Gets to do some looting, try to fill the graveyard. The Power Stone survives. It doesn't do anything, but it does survive. <laughs> about it. I wish I had a Karn right now. <laughs> Karn would actually be okay at the moment. Karn was great. Great might be a little hyperbolic. It it did a thing, sort of. Um... Hardcast Dusk. <laughs> All right, sure. Down to 15. Well, put a Johnny into play. Dig up a Johnny. One, two, one, two, three, four. Hmm. 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 This power stone just doesn't do anything. Do you think, well, once we get to the next set, if we have more ways to actually use the power stones, then I think they they might go up in value. Like, if we actually have things we can do with them, then they might actually be kind of sweet. But right now, we just there's not a ton we can do with them. Um, yeah, let's... Let's get rid of that. opponent uh we need our mana this turn to to double removal we we want to keep our planes blocker loyalty high because we get to double activate them and then potentially alt uh ultimate them so i think that i think that two removal spells is better than the loam speaker here our opponent hasn't had good removal targets so they likely have a bunch of removal in hand i would guess and now we get to do things. 
Urza assembles the Titan has been like legit impressive. What's the worst you've misread a card during a draft? I misread Lost Legacy so bad. I thought it was three mana exile of cards with the target name. Doesn't it? Doesn't Lost Legacy do that? Wow, another Dreg Mangler. All right. Opponent is mangling us. Well, okay. How do we do this? Hmm. I'll take up a Jotty. Land, definitely going to the bottom. Oh. Take up a Jotty. There's assembles the Titans to the bottom. Wow, this is going poorly. Uh, wow, this is going so poorly. Like the poor ist. <laughs> Take up Wandering Emperor. Oh, Urza Assembles the Titan has been much less impressive this game. Urza Assembles the Titan. Wow, the top of our deck is as bad as the top of a deck could be. Planeswalker? Nope. Okay, here we go. <laughs> wow, that was so bad about it another mangler and lethal yeah well that was that was disappointing <laughs> well that was cute it was cool to see our opponent's deck do its thing <laughs> yeah it doesn't i mean <sighs> i wonder if a deck like that could work in in real standard I wonder if it's possible in a world where there's just like so many cards that are good that say exile the graveyard. <laughs> the problem was it needed more card. Uh, assaulted. Welcome to the fish pole. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. There's so many cards that just incidentally at exile the graveyard that I'm always skeptical of, of decks like that. I mean, it worked out for our opponent that time. They had the, they had the, the dream of double reanimation on turn four. Although, they did have, like, the ultimate draw, and they only just barely won. <laughs> Which, that makes me a little bit worried about the, the power of that archetype. That they had, like, literally turn four Olivia and Titan of Industry, and they had to, like, scrape by and have a scry four to the bottom and whiff hard to actually, <laughs> to actually win. It seems like if you're getting that draw, you should be... You should just be smacking people. Like, if you have the, the nuts come together for you and you, like, kind of just barely get there. Yeah, maybe that's Karn's problem is the just way too many, way too many pads. <laughs> yeah, liberate, liberate the card. Well, hmm. Well, we'll play this. Maybe this deck just needs to play all the farewells. Dude, Emmett, welcome to the visual. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You did a farewell in the main. Like, isn't that a... Isn't farewell a pretty legit main deck card in standard for for decks that are at mid-ranger control? Oh, so bad. Yeah, we're just dead, dead, dead. Well... Best of one. <laughs> Good old best of one. All right, one more Planeswalker deck and we'll switch. AK the Great. Welcome to the Fish Bowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, aggro decks look hot when they win the die roll in best of one. <laughs> Karn wouldn't have done anything there. Karn wouldn't have done anything like at all. Opponent of Elf Sleeper. Well, play the land past the turn. Opponent. Getting in for one. 
I don't even know if I want to bother, like, interacting with this, since we have two rats in hand if we hit a white source. We do need to hit a white source. All right, so this is basically very similar to our mono black deck. That's not a white source, though. Well, all right. <laughs> do we draw a white source or do we die? I mean, there's, like, a single card in the deck just to see if it is as bad as uh, expected, and it was pretty bad. So I, I guess the answer would be would be yes, <laughs> for the most part. About it. Loses the dork, plays another one. White mana? No. Okay. Uh, one thing you will also notice about... One thing you will also notice uh, about this standard is the three color mana is kind of meh. It's actually not, it's actually not very good. It's okay if you have a triome. If you're in a triome color, it's like decent, but it's, it's not, not a great, not a great, um, not a great mana base at the moment. We only have part of the pain lands. Yeah, I guess we got to take up and try to, try to hit some, oh my goodness. Oh! Oh, one white source still. Opponent. Yeah, I think a Valve Sleeper is a is a decent one drop for sure. Gonna level up. Opponent ticks up. Well, we've seen quite a few. Uh, <laughs> we have a. Uh, ultimated Lily a bunch of times and our opponent looks like they might be doing the same thing so the Lily on ultimate seems like a a real thing in standard all right opponent decides to ignore Ren hits our face we're down to eight well faithful absence is good only matters if we hit a white source okay it happened Miracle of miracles, a white land has been drawn. <laughs> Praise be the magic gods. Well, we will pass the turn. <laughs> does Karn Siley shut off Fane lands? It does not. Um, Karn Silex, I believe, what's the actual, the actual wording on it? I know that it does not work with Fane lands. I believe that it says... Except for mana abilities. Yeah, players can't players can't pay life to cast spells or to activate abilities that are not mana abilities. So uh yeah, the pain lands are, are mana abilities, so they get excluded. Well yeah, we're gonna actually discard the wrath. Cut down, being discarded. Well, that's wandering emperor. Get rid of the valve sleeper. Snipe that. Down to eight. But now we got the Planeswalkers. Taking an adversary. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh, Broker's Ascendancy. Make a tree folk. Counter on the tree folk, although we are dead to our opponent having a removal spell in hand, which is pretty frightening, pretty frightening. Counters on everything. Are you holding a real removal spell? They discarded a million of them. Do they have a million and one? Opponent plays a land. What's that last card? Yeah, the problem, Ren's ultimate would be sweet, but we need to live. <laughs> Living is more important. Ace Mundelay, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent with a big attack. Decays away their board. Oh, we're gonna block the the cod script. Oh no, we gotta. This feels bad. We gotta block here and go to one. Or go to two. There's a random drain like that saga that could get us. Alright, opponent loses their board. What's the follow-up? Can we stabilize Graveyard Trespasser? Okay. Oh, and we're going, okay, down to one. Good thing we blocked that way or we'd be dead. Hmm. 
So. Get rid of the conscript. This is what you get for hurting my people. We go up to three. Oh, what do we do? How do we how do we get around there? Yeah. Good thing we blocked that way or we'd be super dead. Uh, how do we do this? So here's where we're at. We can make a tree folk, but then this flips. We can tick up to hit a land for Wandering Emperor, but if we whiff on lands, then we, then we die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our odds of hitting a land are incredibly high. Yeah, I think this is safest. I don't like letting the trespasser flip, but I think this is safest. Worst case, if they have removal, we can Wandering Emperor make a token to chump and stay alive. Best case, the tree folk holds. And then we get to take up Ren next turn. Ooh, okay, the tree folk does hold. That is the best case. And we draw land. That's very good. So we get to take up Ren. Broker's Ascendancy is actually pretty... Ooh, a Jano. Broker's Ascendancy is actually pretty sweet. Mega Samurai. Play a land. Broker's Ascendancy is making our, our Planeswalkers loyalty really shoot up. We might get back to the ultimate Ren plan. Liliana's been very, very, very good. Kirk Hep, an opponent scoops it up. Oh, all right. Well, that's super friends. I want to try to squeeze it like what are two more decks? We gotta, we gotta. So what are the decks that we haven't got to that are, that are hyped? I feel like I promised, I feel like I promised a deck or two that we haven't seen yet. And we should, we should play them when we got the chance. Oh, yeah, Ren hardly ever ultimates. Kirk Hap, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We already played Mono Black Aggro. Angels, Soldiers. No squee list at the moment. Salt Lake Goyf was really good. Urborg, so the, the Goyf. The Goyf is, you gotta be... You gotta be a, a very creature heavy deck. That was our lesson. We played it in a Jun deck, and the Jun deck was good, but Goyf was very, very sad, which I guess is flavorful because it's just like in modern. <laughs> but uh, in a deck full of creatures, it's, it's really sweet. We haven't played Mono Black Control. Elves, Soldiers. We already played Elves. Danitha, Soldiers. Yeah, Super Friends is sweet. I think Super Friends definitely has potential, and we can do more with it. All right, well. Jeskai Ramp is a uh, Teferi trying to untap the new Lotus, essentially. Amazad, welcome to the fishbowl. Oh, we haven't tried Duplomancy. We gotta try Duplomancy. Uh, we definitely gotta try. We definitely gotta try Duplomancy. We gotta try that one. <laughs> we have to. That's like uh, the Ultra Jank. We've played some pretty good decks. We gotta play the, the Against Odds decks, too. We gotta try es uh, Esper Duplomancy. We have to, we have to. There's no Colossus Hammer in Standard. Can you show us a World Spell deck? Uh, sure, the World Spell deck, so this is a, a viewer submitted deck. It's kind of Naya stuff, so what it's, what it's hoping to do is discard World Spell and then invoke Justice it into play and then um, put Sanctuary Warden, I guess, is the, the best hit into play. Hopefully you find a Sanctuary Warden or a Workshop War Chief. Uh, I think uh, this kind of reflects my my concern with the card, which is just like there's no great finishers. There's no grizzle brands, blight seals. It's if you can reanimate it for five mana and end up putting two things into play and it draws you a couple cards, that's sweet. And I like the the value aspect, but I would be much more excited. Like part of what makes tooth and nail so good is part of what makes tooth and nail good is you get two cards and you win the game. Like, Tooth and Nail does not see play as just, like, a value card in general. Like, oh, I'll get a couple Moldrifters or something. 
Uh, in general, I've not really ever seen that that play style with it. Um, it's usually like, get an Emrakul, get a Xenagos. If I actually do this thing, I kill you. And I think that's what the world spell is missing at this point in standard. There's no like, if I do this, you die. Uh, so I'm really hoping, and we can still we can still try it for fun. Ooh, we got the Duplomancy. All right, well, here we go. Let's see if Duplomancy actually can do things. We need a couple more lands, but, well, there's one. All right, Duplomancy, Duplomancy, Duplomancy. <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't played any braids yet, have we? I mean, I do like Workshop Warchief a lot. Workshop Warchief is, a, is actually like a legit good card. Tooth, tooth and snail, maybe. <laughs> it's it's like a really slow tooth and nail. It is nice that it's always seven mana. That is a that is a big upside. Well, all right, brutal Cathar, get rid of the token. Next turn we slam Duplomancy and see what happens. We we have two hollow respites so far. We could use another creature. Just copying brutal Cathars again and again is a little little awkward, but. Uh, who didn't? Well, let's see. Is this card good? Is this a new Panharmonicon? Duplomancy is, it's kind of Orvar, but it doesn't die to everything. If you target a artifact or creature you control with a spell that only targets one thing, you get a, you get a copy of it. Except it's non-legendary. So it's like Orvar that is an enchantment and that works with, and that works with legends. Well, okay. Duplomancy down. Pass the turn. Opponent flips the saga. So we can start making Brutal Cathars. We'd like to hit another land. We're getting pretty far behind here. Opponent's just curving out. I think Rakdos is probably going to be a very uh, a very good card, a uh, very good deck in standard. This might just be better than the like the mono black decks. Oh, another Duplomancy. Well, okay. Brutal Cathar. Oh, it would have been really nice to hit a land there. Brutal Cathar. We got to get rid of the reflections. Pass the turn, but we're just... Oh, we're just hoping and praying. Fading Hope's like the worst spell to have at the moment because if we copy, we bounce. <laughs> Not the best time for that. Ragdose itself, not not that good of a card, but <laughs> the Ragdose deck. How do we even do this? So I guess we block here. Fading Hope, Brutal Cathar. Get a token copy of Brutal Cathar. I don't know if this actually puts us ahead. <laughs> It would have been nice if we had his other creatures to go with it. Very interesting what kind of reanimation and Jan Jund sheet you have. Wanted to collect them myself after spoilers. Ooh, so the reanimation deck is a uh, is a viewer submitted deck, not one I brewed myself, but they're uh, they're on the list if you would like to see the the deck list. I don't know. We probably won't end up getting to all of them. Opponent does not know what to make a dupe. Dupe fancy. <laughs> All right, going to Infernal Grass, the Brutal Cathar. Well, it doesn't stop the token from being made. So we get a token copy. We get rid of that. We dropped a two, not a lot of life. Oh, yeah. Well, opponent drew many, many Disractos good cards. <laughs> Uh, the tokens can't flip, so no backside, no flipping. So it would try to flip, but it would fizzle, essentially. The big wig, the bunny soldier. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is Dominaria sweet so far? Yeah, I mean, so far it's been really, it's been super fun. We'll see. I mean, early access day is always super fun because you run into people that are trying things. Although, honestly, we've, we haven't run into that many people playing playing a ton of brews today we've run into some but we've run into a lot of people that are 
I guess playing the the somewhat good cards, like the Rakdoses and Lilianas and so forth. Well, this hand does not have Duplomancy, but it actually has <laughs> this stuff that works with Duplomancy. So I guess hopefully we draw into it. I guess we don't need Duplomancy on turn zero anyway. I mean, we played some, we played some Jund in, I guess, normalish standard decks as well. So, where is Squee? <sighs> I think Squee, if Squee fits in a deck, it's probably something like Mono Red, and <sighs> that's just not my kind of early access deck. Maybe it could be a budget deck or something. Maybe we play Mono Red with it or or whatever. Good news, I have an introductory day and an LTS tomorrow. No guarantee for a full time or anything, but at least I'm getting my foot in my door. Hey, that's awesome. Congratulations, uh, Magic Arp. That's super exciting. Working in LTS would probably be super fun. Squee goes Rel in Rakdos. Who? Hmm. So, I mean, I like that you can discard. I could say playing it as like a, a one of maybe. I like that you could discard it to Liliana and escape it back into play. Like, that's a sweet a sweet synergy in Rakdos. I think you got Liliana. You got Graveyard Trespasser. You potentially have Reckless Storm Seeker. There's a lot of a lot of stuff that's fighting for that three-drop slot. But I could see playing a... Is this our deck? It's very similar to our deck, if it's not our deck. But I could see playing, like, a, a copy of it. Hmm. Well, all right, play the land, Brutal Gathar. Get rid of the Goyf. Hedge for one, I guess. About it. Hey, thank you, little baby noob noob. Welcome to the stream, good to see ya. Oh, the Simic Fairy Rogue. I'm really excited to build around in Commander, and I think it's a card that I'm gonna try and like, one of the downsides, oh, it's not exactly our deck because we didn't have Consuming Blob. Um, wait, what does this do? At the beginning of your end step, create an ooze. So this is just going to keep happening forever. Uh, okay. Well, we probably don't want that to keep happening forever. <laughs> that that seems, that seems less than ideal. <laughs> so let's do that and pass the turn. Didn't play Blue Red Prowess. That's a deck that I think is probably going to be a budget magic deck. And I try not to have, like, the stream decks and the YouTube decks be the same. So I kind of left it off of today's list intentionally because I think it it's going to be one of the best budget-friendly decks. As far as, like, paper budgets or arena budgets. So expect it to be coming soon on the YouTube. But, yeah, I did did not do the Is It, like, Prowess spell slinger deck today because of that. Yeah, one of the downsides of early access days, so you only play standard. And, like, Ivy, I really want to play Ivy in, like, Explore? Maybe Historic? One of those formats where you get a few more pieces. I think Ivy's going to... Oh, no. Oh, my God. So many blobs. Opponent's got exactly enough mana to make this work, too. Like, exactly. Well. Yeah, we're... I mean, we're pretty dead. Ether Channeler. Bounce a token. This is just like such a such a losing battle though. In this game, no duplicity. Well, consuming blob is like pretty good here for our opponent. The fact that it keeps triggering every turn. I mean, I guess we answered their first two big things, but they just keep drawing more of them. Yeah, I mean, Ivy seems super sweet for yeah, please, please stop blobbing us. <laughs> uh, it seems super good for Commander or Brawl. Like, I think that's what Ivy's designed for. Yeah, slipping out the back Cathar doesn't do much, though, without, without Duplicity out. Because you don't get the ETB again. So we could use it just to save it if we had to, but we won't get to, we won't get to exile something else. With Duplicity out, if we got Duplicity, but we don't even have the mana for it, hmm. About it. I mean, if they attack with the real blob, we... All right. I mean, I'm 99% sure we're getting super blown out here, but uh, if we don't do this, we just straight up lose to this blob anyway, so... <laughs> we, might as well, we might as well go for it and hope they don't have a removal spell. If they don't, we have, like, some very tiny chance of winning. 
All right. Well, we dropped to eight. Opponent gets back to Goyf. We lose our board, but at least we're not getting facing down a new who's every end step. Yeah, Blob was good there. Would be super sick if Infinity Spoilers on Goldfish had additional filter to only show eternal legal cards. One mana five five. Yeah, we don't have a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, one more one more try, and then maybe maybe duplicity is gonna have to end up being an against odds card. <laughs> so I, I just wanna see it go off once. I want to see it go off once, but maybe that's going to take an entire Against Odds episode. My six-year-old really enjoyed your last Against Odds. All the tutors you kept talking about that he heard as tutor. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad we can we can reach a young audience. <laughs> even, if, even if it is with uh, mispronunciations or mishearing of words. Consuming Bob is actual Tarmogoyf. Yeah, it actually is, is worded like Tarmogoyf, isn't it? It's actually worded like it, which I think is actually a bad thing in standard. I think like the actual Goyf is way stronger because card types are tough in standard. You don't have you don't have easy ways to up your card types. You're just kind of hoping for the best. I'm actually not even sure what do they have? Land creature, planeswalker, and a spell they must have randomly milled. Well, all right. No duplicity. I don't know if we're going to see it go off. I don't know if we're going to see it. Maybe it's not possible. <laughs> well, I'm not expecting duplicity to be competitive, so to speak. But I am expecting it to do something cool, like once every some percentage of the games. <laughs> hey, what's up, Edgeverus? How are you? Hello from the U.S. Pay one second artifact, make it through. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a. Uh, hmm. I mean, the other thing is, remember, we are playing best of one, and like, best of one's just such a face rolly format. <laughs> like, this is just like not really a game of magic. Like, technically, it's a game of magic, but for all intents and purposes, like, your opponent's aggro, they curve out. Like, it really does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it just is not actually like a, an actual game. Uh, sure. We're, uh, I guess, we're probably not supposed to scoop at this point, even though our opponent is not really doing anything of note. Opponent. <laughs> I mean, the problem is that Arena makes people not like magic. I think that's the, the issue. <laughs> Arena, by design, like, turns magic into a job. So... I mean, I totally understand why why people play the format because, I mean, you know, you got to you gotta feed your kids those wild cards. <laughs> the kids got to eat. The kids got to eat. And, yeah, I mean, sometimes they got to eat the wild cards. Opponent. But I do, I do dislike, like, Magic already is pretty swingy based on play draw and... The swinginess of play draw is just like greatly, greatly exaggerated based on, based on only having one game. And you just see that, like, I don't know. I, I've come to grips with playing best of one on occasion and I like don't really mind it, but it's those like aggro matchups. It's just like, it's a non-game. It's just as much as a, of a non-game as... It's just as much of a non-game as a as like a, a mulligan to three or whatever, or a mana screw. Like it's a different ooh, we got a duplicity. It's a different kind of non-game, but it's still really like not a, a no real magic is being played when that happens. Uh alright, deserted beach, go. Yes, I, I do not exist. <laughs> this stream does not exist. None of this is real. <laughs> Uh, hey, Spirited Companion. I, this might be our chance to see Duplicity. We won the die roll. We won the die roll. We got Duplicity. We got ways to target Duplicity. Our opponent has not played any... Oh, Tenacious Underdog. Tenacious Underdog is going to see a lot of play in the standard format. Channeler, draw a card. Please be a land for Duplicity? No. Hollandry Spite, well past the turn. 
Come on, Dak. We need one land. We need one land. We need one land. Uh, do I know any of the opponents? We played against Ali Adrazi back at the beginning of the stream. Wow. All right. Well, that's fun. Me hook massacre. <laughs> well, all right. Spirited companion. Draw a card. Not a land. All right. Pass the turn. Opponent. Wedding announcement. Huh. Well, bounce this, I guess. Scry for a land. Okay. A little lot late to the party, but that is that is technically a land magic the gathering card. Play duplicity. Alright, go. We have a handful of stuff that can target things. Do we get to untap and do things? Is this the time for diplomacy to do a actual an actual game movement? Oh, boot it. Uh, yes, this is post rotation standard. This is Dominator United sneak peek early access. Tenacious underdog returns. And opponent doesn't want to see cool things. Goes attacking. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess we gotta pass and try to Urtai. If we get to untap with Urtai, our opponent will draw a lot of cards. Opponent goes attacking. Smash Portal! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, Urtai. Counter the wedding announcement. We can't... We can't have another wedding announcement. Blood Tithe Harvester. Hmm. 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 Well, play the tap land. How can we get out of this? Hmm. All right. Well, planner incursion. Kill the blood tithe harvester. That's a trigger. That's a copy. Blake it, get it back. Destroy the... <clears throat> Tenacious underdog. Opponent gains some life. Pass the turn. Okay, we, we did a thing. We did a thing with Duplomancy. Going to pre-release at LGS? Maybe. But most likely... Most likely I'll be recording content and doing stuff online. One of the hard parts about a new set coming out is uh <laughs> is it's the time when the most content needs to needs to be produced. So I don't make it to Hmm. Let's face out this one. Cause the real one we can fading hope. Counter the Fable, the Mirror Breaker. <laughs> Urtitron! Urtitron! Hey, what's up, Urtai? Good, uh, good timing. Perfect timing. You're going off. About it. Fable, the Mirror Breaker. Well, okay. <laughs> Counter it. <laughs> More Urtais. Pick it up about it passes hmm well get him hit ya wow double blocking okay um sure so soft trades We've made our opponent draw so many cards. <laughs> hey, welcome raiders. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the thank you for the raid. Uh, opponent. Hey, thanks so much, Apex Gaming. 
a better than Daps. You're you're here to see us try to duplomancy. This has been our our jank attempt to pull off duplomancy. Oh, wow, they've drawn so many of those. Uh, Urtai. Counter it. <laughs> they've drawn. They've just drawn all the all the fable of the mirror breakers in a row. Okay, and wedding announcement. Yeah, I think we'll let that one go. <laughs> and voltage surge. Well, okay, fading hope, pick it up. Counter target, hmm. Oh, this is not a May. That's awkward. Yeah, let's count on the Fading Hope so we draw a card. Another Duplomancy. Okay. About it. Oh, Interceptor. Well, go to combat. Attack you. About it. Blocks. Oh, we're trying so hard, but our opponent is like... <laughs> We have, we have essentially, with a whole pile of horrible cards, we've essentially built a wedding, uh, a wedding announcement. <laughs> Our opponent's making two twos each turn just for playing this one enchantment, and we're like, four man enchantment, need all these spells at target. We're like, <laughs> putting so much, so much effort into making this work, even though it's, <laughs> it's just ridiculously, ridiculously more work than it is for our opponent. Wait, what are we getting? What are we getting funded for? All right. Well, discard a duplomancy. Oh, do you not have to target with Urtai? Oh, choose up to one. Okay, so we could have said no. Would we have said no? Yeah, I guess we probably would have said no. Oh, put it. Sorry, that, that that counts. Oh my god, another wedding announcement. We just cannot overcome these wedding announcements. Duplomancy. Play a land. Hollow Respite's pretty bad because it's... <laughs> no matter what we do, it just doesn't matter because of these wedding announcements. <laughs> Oh, about it, Archangel of Wrath. Gonna kick it a bunch of times. Well, this is the first Archangel of Wrath we saw. We almost didn't see one at all. Gonna kill the Interceptor. Yeah. Ha. <sighs> well, Duplomancy, I will tell you this. It is not a Panharmonicon, that's for sure. If your Panharmonicon required a ton of extra cards and steps, I guess you can... You can kind of see the comparison, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe the. Oh, you know, all right. We'll do one game with the viewer submitted angel deck. And then and then I got to go get Bear. Bear Bear's time with the, the sitter is uh, is up. So there's a viewer submitted angel deck. We'll, we'll do one game. Someone, someone asked for angels, so let's do one. Hopefully, we don't get mana screwed, because then I really do have to go get bear. But we'll do, we'll do one game with the angel deck. One game. Good news is, even though the stream is uh, is wrapping up for today, Thursday is full set release, so we'll get to some of these more janky things. And I think Duplomancy, I still feel like it can do cool things. I don't think it can do powerful things, or like things that are likely to win you games in standard let's put it that way like i think it can do powerful things but i don't think it does things that are ooh, archangel of wrath but i don't think it does things that are especially especially good for winning games as standard but i do think it can do cool enough things that i'm i'm still hyped to have it on like a against the odds bowl or something oh god oh god our favorite archetype has returned Mono blue, count, counter it all. Good thing is we got wedding announcement. Wedding announcement might just be uh, might just beat this deck more or less by itself. We saw to beat our deck more or less by itself. Ether channeler to bounce our token. 
Or maybe it draws a card. Draws a card. Ooh. Well. Well, well, well. Uh, Omnixilis with Casualty. Sack the token. Two copies. Um, let's make a devil. Take up. Oh, this is looking, this is looking good. Maybe this isn't the mono blue. Like a mono blue tempo deck. Maybe this is, I don't know what this is. They gotta be casting spells on their stuff though, right? You don't play Storm Chaser Drake unless you're targeting your own stuff. Ooh, Simic. Oh, maybe this is an Ivy deck. Is someone trying to go off with Ivy? I would actually love to see that because I just couldn't find many pieces to make Ivy work in standard. I, I started working on it and then I was like, eh, you know what? I think we just, I think we just, uh, I think we just end up moving on to, uh, moving on to historic or whatever. Hmm. Well, oh, opponent's trying to duplicate. Okay, re I can respect that. Now I kind of don't even want to kill our opponent because I want to. I want to get duplicate. We know our opponent's pain. We have been. We have been in this same exact spot, <laughs> trying to do this same exact thing, knowing how how much it hurts, how hard it actually is. Well, let's just kick. Let's just kick this angel. Only once. Not a full siege rhino, but. Still, three, four, flyer, two to your face. Draw a card. Pump the team. I mean, wedding announcement's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, I think Archangel Wrath, this is also on my list of like just best, best cards in, uh, in the format. All right, so opponent... Storm Chaser Drake makes a second one with the Curiosity. Plays a land. So that's a cool synergy. Duplomancy, Storm Chaser, Timely Inference. Makes another Drake. I like the, the Drake as the, the card draw engine. Enduring Angel. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Well, tick up. <laughs> Your punishment. I don't know about enduring angel. That's that's going deep with the that's going very deep with the angel tribe. Bonus discards. I'll go to combat. Attack ya. Yeah, I actually don't know if we can close this game out now. <laughs> I feel like our opponent's just gonna make a million drakes and draw a ton of cards, and I don't know if there's. I don't know if there's a way that we can win from here. Yeah, Storm Chaser. I mean, Storm Chaser Drake seems like a like a good a good plan to go with a to go with the uh, diplomacy if we can get it going. Hey, what's up, G R Michello? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see ya. I mean, so the angel have felt good, but we're we're definitely getting janked out here. I guess it's a little a little unfortunate that our opponent drew. Oh, there's the ivy. Maybe a little unfortunate that we dealt with the first storm chaser and they drew, drew another one and a duplomancy and managed to do it just before they they would have been dead. But timely inference. <laughs> this is this is a full dream. Well. Unfortunately, we're ending with uh, with our opponent's deck doing something cool, but I'm glad we got to see uh, <laughs> we got to see Ivy before the stream ended. <laughs> oh, early access day, you get to you get to see some crazy things. You don't have to be Mardu to kick the angel twice. You do have to be Mardu to kick uh, the angel. So the way the kicker works is you gotta pay you gotta pay each of the costs. You can't pay like white and double black or white and double red. So you do have to have Mardu colors of mana if you wanna actually kick it twice. Well, all right. I don't think there's a card that exists that <laughs> that gets us out of this. Definitely not Sundown Pass. Well, we'll replay. Uh, I will say, I don't think the Enduring Angel is. 
I don't know. Well, maybe. Maybe after rotation. Maybe it's Enduring Angel's time to, uh, time to shine. So I guess we're just hoping that our opponent at some point draws a bunch of lands and can't keep doing what they're doing. Although, based on what we've seen from their deck, that seems pretty unlikely. All right, so they got another slip out the back at a minimum. Found it. Blocks. Blocks. And cast a spell, Fading Hope. Bounces our thing, bounces their ivy, scries a bunch. Sure, sure, sure. And untaps. Opponent's deck seemed fun if it was an Is It Spell Slinger? <laughs> Wait, this is not very similar to Is It Spell Slinger, is it? Ether Channeler. And yeah, enduring angel has been a disappointment. I will say it is it has been a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, Karn was Karn was pretty bad. Liliana was very good. Liliana was good, Goyf was good. I mean a lot of the the new cards have felt good. Karn not one of those cards. Ivy returns. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's like draw, draw Meat Hook Massacre or, or lose. Not a Meat Hook Massacre. Sundown Pass, second turn in a row. Well, let's, let's draw a Magic the Gathering card. Well, Archangel of Wrath. Kick it, kick it. Oh, you know they got a spell. You know they got a spell. <sighs> hit your face. Hit your face. The new Goyf is good if you play a deck with a lot of creatures. We played a Jun deck, and the Goyf was incredibly bad. But then we played a Saltai deck that was like 30 creatures, and it was great like a super duper ultra powerful all right hit you to two so i guess another archangel of wrath resolving could also all right another one of those makes a bunch of copies does a bunch of bouncing now opponent definitely is not fizzled that's for sure Draws a bunch of cards, makes a bunch of copies of stuff. Captain B, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tube for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, up to 30. Kill the bird past the turn. Come on, meatball or another Archangel of Wrath. Ledger Shredder. And it is nice that they can't really bounce these angels. <laughs> because if they do and they can't counter it on the way back down, they die. Another Duplomancy triggers the Shredder. We're like a draw away. Our opponent's gone off. As cool as it's been to see Duplomancy go off, the fact that we might still be winning this also does not give me a lot of hope in the power of Duplomancy. It is hard for me to imagine Duplomancy doing more than it's doing right now, and, and I'm not sure that our opponent's favored to win this game anymore. Like, we have draws that just straight up win. No, Sanctuary Warden. Remove a counter draw card. Pass the turd. Opponent untaps. Another Ledger Shredder. Are we going to end up winning this? Uh, opponent's still got like 32 cards. They got, they got many cards. Many, many cards. They're not even close to milling out at this point. Ledger Shredder, loots, it loots. What's that one card? <laughs> they have so many Storm Chaser Drakes, and it's not, it's not winning for them. How about Avasas? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, interesting. That could be a way we could win. If we can get one of these angels to die... If we can get an angel to die, then we can win. All right, draw a card. A Valve Sleeper. 
whole fable of the mirror breaker. Ledger shredder triggers. Uh, we don't have an Omnix list at the moment, right? Oh, get back Ob would take Numa. Hmm. Eh, that could work. <laughs> yeah, I was focused on killing the angel, but yeah, maybe just getting back Ob is enough, actually. Well, next turn, if we're... If we have not already, uh... Won or lost, then maybe we'll go for that. Wedding announcement. Yeah, I think that would have worked. Well, uh, with one card in hand, yeah, that would have worked, wouldn't it? Go attacking. Remove a counter. <laughs> Phone it to two. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six. Six Torp Chaser Drakes. <laughs> What a wild, what a wild game. What a wild, wild game. If you make a copy of Ob and then uptick it twice, they would have died. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, we probably should have uh, taken Numa back Ob. Slip out the back, draws a bunch of cards, makes a bunch of copies. Yup, yup, yup. This again. Sure, sure, sure. Well, play the land, pass the turn. Make a token that we don't really want. <laughs> I mean, I guess our opponent has to make a big enough board where they just straight up kill us. If, uh, ah, boy. <laughs> Enduring Angel. Disappointment. <laughs> Disappointment. Turns out Bane Slayer with two shocks because it out is good. Yeah, Archangel Wrath is uh is great. Very, very good. Alright, opponent. Going off. Copies Ether Channeler. Draws a card. Draws a card. Draws a card. Ledger Shredder. Draws a card. Oh, well, alright. I mean, maybe our opponent can win here. Rise to the top. All right, so opponent's going to continue comboing off, apparently. Untaps. Ledger Shredder, number three. So our opponent has played quite literally their entire deck. Ether Channeler. Triggers the Ledger Shredders. Now our opponent's getting to the point where they're going to have to do something at some point because they are under 20 cards. They are getting there. They're not close to die. Not super close to dying, but they're getting to the point where... If they don't do anything ever, then sooner or later that's going to catch up with them. Ether Channeler. Going to bounce a permanent. <laughs> Which is the combat research so they can recast it and make more copies of it and draw more cards. <laughs> <laughs> wow what a what a game to end the to end our stream on for the day that's for sure we got to see we got to see duplomancy go off finally <laughs> yeah it is funny that the sound bug still still doing its thing the opponent making more copies of things drawing more cards well at least we get to finally discard this enduring angel which the, its existence is disappointing me. Bounces the Sanctuary Warden. All right, so opponent's about done doing things, I think. They're running out of mana. Goes to combat. Can we draw something that is lethal? Planes. That's not lethal. Well, discard Enduring Angel. Discard Planes. Oh... Praise the magic gods. <laughs> oh, in the end, we get there with the Archangel of Wraths. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> wow. Well, we got to see Duplomancy go off, although... <laughs> although the fact that 
<laughs> it went off this hard and it didn't win. Makes me a little nervous. Like, I don't know if I'm building against the odds deck that's gonna that's gonna do more than what this did, and it wasn't good enough. Or maybe the takeaway is Archangel of Wrath is like actually kind of absurd. Because Archangel of Wrath just like kicking this won us the game. Like the Archangel of Wrath, maybe it's even underrated. Siege Angel really coming through. Wow. So, oh, what do we learn? What did we learn about Dominaria United? So, quick, quick overview. We got through a decent chunk of our decks. Not as many as, not all of them. Not as many as we we would have liked. Uh, but we can get to those in the future. Salt Egg Life was really sweet. Marno Angels played that last ridiculous match, but we only got one game. Boomer Jund cut the Tarmogoyf, but Liliana... If anyone tells you Liliana's bad, it didn't feel that way today. It felt very, very, very good in standard. Elves was actually like oddly effective in best of one at least. Zombies was probably the biggest, the biggest dud. Not because zombies are necessarily bad, but weather light did not work well. Uh, as well in that deck as we were hoping. Dupli uh, Duplomancy couldn't really make it come together. Domain felt very, very powerful. And mono black decks also seem good. In uh, Band Super Friends, can be a little slow, but when it comes together, it's a, it's a ridiculous amount of Planeswalker value. So on that note, everyone, I believe that brings us to the end of our early access stream for today. Yeah, no, no creature lands definitely helps with uh, the Planeswalkers. So let me know what you think. If you want some decks to mess around with, pull them up on the sheet. We will be back on Thursday to have some more fun, to do some more streaming on release day. So uh, use Briefcase and Super Friends. Ooh, that could work. Maybe we just got to be five color super friends. But on that note, everyone, thanks so much. You're awesome and amazing. I love y'all. Reminders on the way out the door. Replay YouTube if you missed anything. Normal YouTube. Tons of content coming up on there. One more reminder that our sponsor tonight is Card Kingdom. And if you need to pick up some of these cards that we played today, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtdgoldfish. You can get a free goldfish digger. Mostly, thank you to all of you. I love y'all. You're amazing, awesome, spectacular. Have a great night. Enjoy the rest of Early Access Day. We'll be back on Thursday to have some more fun. So until then, everyone, I love you, and I will talk to you soon.